Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used Samsung Galaxy and other smartphones are worth at gazelle.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. Yeah, now that's on. See, it looks perfect. Episode 109, recorded on Tuesday, May 14th, 2013. We are your weekly source for the latest news, apps, hardware, and glass holes. I'm Jason Howell. <laughs> I'm Ron Richards. <laughs> and I'm Gina Trapani. And we... Whoa! Breaking news! I hate one of I, the people that works here. I feel <laughs> your pain, Chad. <laughs> I hate everybody that I work with. Oh, really. man. I'm just kidding. Um, we are super stoked to invite back on the show. And actually, I think you were here last time right around Google I.O. Right before I.O., yeah. Michael yeah. Wolfson, uh, Android developer, of course, did uh, Droid of the Day, which was kind of the winner of the uh, fan yeah, submitted right. apps. Claim to fame. I know. It's totally winner of the Android arena. It's my, you know. I would like to, I'd like to point out that Michael has joined us not only wearing his Google Glass, but also sporting his Google I.O. shirt. <laughs> So for some reason, I've wronged Michael in some way. <laughs> right. You just and, you know, really rub it in. And I wanted to come in that, person to make sure yeah, exactly. you know, rubbed sure, it in in person. Make sure Excellent. he knows that I'm not going to Google I.O. and he is. So, it's, you know, it's good yes, to have you. That, that was here. my intention. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I approve. <laughs> uh, we don't. Ron, we don't want to leave you out in the cold. I'm being left out of a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, <laughs> I know you want to join us in this this world of glass. I will admit, I am curious. I am, okay. I am. I am a little curious about well, the glass. I I thought I thought about you. And uh, here you go. It's a box. It's a box of glass. So I want to I want to get your impression of this right out of the box because so, I was pretty impressed yesterday when I went to Google and uh, got fitted for the glass. My big head. Sorry. All right. There so you go. I'm so open it up. I here. thought you might want white. Oh my God. Um, I hope you're okay with that. I'll. I'll. I'll hey, beggars can't be choosers. This is a lot of white. Yeah. So it ooh, is. it's got a neat little look at this. Let's yeah. It's got a little. Yeah, little, little instructions. instructions right there. Got a nice subtle approach. I was pretty impressed right. with the uh, the packaging on this. Yeah. Can you zoom in on that, Chad? Oh, uh, yes. It tells you, let's get started. It tells mm -hmm. you to turn on the device by pressing the power button. Adjust yeah. the nose bridge. I don't I don't imagine this will come easy to you. It took them an hour to walk through really? Google Glass with me at the Google campus. Well, I don't know how, let's be how long it took. Let's be honest. I'm mm -hmm. smarter than you. Okay. Well, <laughs> there you go. There's your... <laughs> There's your Google Glass. You can go ahead and wear that throughout the rest of the show. Uh, it's it's a, a, a prototype model. Uh, it seems a little rough around the edges. Little, well, it, you it, know, it, it's come a long way in a short period of time. It almost, yeah, it almost seems uh, hacked together here. <laughs> Who is responsible? I like the, uh, I, I like the camera. The camera, the camera here is looks like it's, it like it's looks really, really it's really well done. Go ahead, go ahead, put it on. I think it's... Ow, ow, ow. All right, there I, you go. The I, metal sharp up here. The metal sharp. But do you, that, you get used to that. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. You go. Uh, I like how this one doesn't have the nose bridge. <laughs> so, do, don't need the nose bridge. Don't need the nose this bridge. Makes I, feel, it, I feel like I fit in now. This brings... Yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this like uh, a, wow. a glass hole wannabe? Is that what I, it is? Yeah, or is apparently, it like... <laughs> apparently. Apparently so. Um, yes, yeah, so you can thank Patrick De La Hanty, actually, who's sitting right over there. He's... Uh, Longtime fan of Twit and actually it now works here with us and yeah. and can bring us fine crafts like that. It's it's not I don't see anything. It's not working. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> it has really bad yeah, battery can, life, Ron. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the nothing. battery life of that device. <laughs> hold on, hold on, we gotta take a picture. Okay, cool. All right, good. Nice. Yeah, there you yeah, go. See, yeah. it's that easy. It's that easy. <laughs> Uh, so there we go. <laughs> well done. All right. Bravo. Excellent. Bravo. I'm happy that was you that had no bit? idea. That was a bit. I guess it was. Uh, <laughs> um, is it okay if we take these off now? I want to try I'm, I'm it, not, though. Yeah? Let's do it. I think okay, I'm, cool. Do you I don't know. I do. Maybe not on the show. Maybe after the show. Or okay. Yeah. I'll All just right. go do it on the show. Well, there's there's three real ones. There's and a guest mode, right? A half there one right a guest there. Mode. Right. For you to play with. Um, That's so cool. Well, thank you for this. I'm going to treasure this. I know how expensive this was. <laughs> thank you. Handmade. Handmade. Handcrafted, yeah. Handcrafted glass. It so. should, it, we should have found glass. it on Etsy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have found a good home there. But thanks, Patrick, for uh, letting good us job, Patrick. That. I 
Bravo. Um, okay, so now that we have that out of the way, uh, we have a lot of uh, actual things to talk about today. Google I.O. for one, we have a lot of predictions that we've kind of uh, been mulling around and, and tossing around there, so we'll talk about those. Uh, Sundar Pichai actually speaks about Android. It's kind of a moment that you know we've been waiting a little while for, so that's cool. Ooh, yeah, we have an ooh, yeah in the house, thanks to another employee, Jeff Needles. Where is my camera? There's, there's the camera. There's the ooh, yeah right there, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, BlackBerry Messenger on Android. Not sure I saw that coming, at least uh, you know, not the last couple of years, but recently they haven't been doing so well. So. I think anybody did. Uh, yeah, exactly. Symbian's so. next. Yep. And uh, so much more. It's but, a packed show. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is, actually. Let's uh, dive right into the news. Well, ever since Andy Rubin stepped down from being head of Android, uh, Sundar Pichai took over for him, and he's basically refused all interviews. He hasn't done any press, right? Mm -hmm. Sundar Pichai is now a head of Chrome, Android, and apps, and he granted his first interview to Wired, to Stephen Levy at Wired, uh, just today, and I think partially to kind of set expectations for I.O. this year, which he's kind of downplaying, and I think that that's a really smart move, given that last year at I.O. we had uh, skydivers jumping out <laughs> of a plane wearing glass, live streaming, rappelling down the side of Moscone, and doing basically the most insane demo you're ever going to see. Uh, Sundar saying, hey, you know what? This year we're going to be a lot more focused on developers and <laughs> making it really easy. <laughs> we need to add glass to that shot. We, we need to have people wearing Google Sundar glass. Sundar should be yeah. wearing uh, glass in that shot. Exactly. <laughs> um, he's saying that this year is not going to be a big Big, big consumer launch this is going to be all about developers and creating a platform for developers to build new and cool things. What do you, what do you guys think? You think that's, that he's trying to manage expectations here? or? Uh, I, I mean, he did specify there's not likely to be any new devices, and I, I think I believe that, obviously. Um, yeah. I think well, we expect the Nexus 7, but um, I don't think we expect well, any other. Yeah, you don't well, think yeah, it's going to be Nexus I? You think it's just going to be Nexus? So it's just going to be the Nexus 7, and you don't think there's going to be a phone? I, I don't think so. I well, think we're gonna get, managing those expectations. And, yeah, we're going to get to our Google I.O. predictions later in the show, but um, I think that, and we were talking about this on the drive up from the city, I think that it's definitely a situation where last year was so big, and they set the bar so high that they need to reel it in a little because I think unless the, unless they're playing with us and yeah. it's going to be even crazier and unexpected. Um, but I think what they're trying to do is I, I think we're in for a more subdued Google I/O as compared to last year, and, that, and this is part of that. You know, and also getting having having a limited exposure, not doing a ton of interviews, and just doing the one with Wired kind of sets the agenda for him and and was very diplomatic in his answers in that. It's like yeah, yeah. that's how it is now, but it might change in the future. Yeah, and, you know, not really committing to anything, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. other than his Samsung Galaxy 4, S4. Yeah, that was interesting. He, yeah. picked, he picked up the S4 it was during great. the interview. And the writer said, how's the eye thing working out? He's like, I haven't tried I haven't tried it. Right. I, yeah, I, it I don't play with those. Like, yeah, yeah. I like that Levy kind of went at him and said, uh, you've got two operating systems going on here. Yeah. Why? He was Is really it, pressing yeah, that. Yeah, he really he really pressed <laughs> yeah. that. And and Bachai was really trying to kind of be like, well, we're trying to do what's best for users and developers. We want to provide choice. And this is how it is now. Right. But he left the door open, Yeah, right? he did leave the door open. Which, yeah. I mean, that that's just what a that's smart, what, smart guy what, in his position yeah. would do. You know, add, keep a little bit in there that's kind of nebulous and open to interpretation so that it keeps people guessing, of course. Um, yeah, we were talking before the show started, and the, the interview was interesting and said a lot without saying very much at all. And I, I suppose it just kind of takes reading through it to kind of understand exactly what that means. But there, there were a lot of kind of like open-ended things like that. Like, you know, maybe at some point if computing gets to a certain point to where we need to mer you know merge them, we'll consider it then. So that leaves the door open. But that doesn't really necessarily say that they're working on it. Right. Um, but there's hope for, for all of these things. Uh, yeah. And it really does feel like IO is, from what he's saying, less hardware, more services. And the more that I think about that, that's not a disappointing thing to me because that's really the, the things, as Android matures and as all of these Google services get built out and become more and more awesome, that's what makes me really enjoy using my phone. Well, and that's what blew my mind about last year was that last year there was such a focus on the hardware. Mm -hmm. And when I think of Google, I don't really think of a hardware company. And so mm -hmm. like I was like, they're pushing a lot of these physical devices and the manufacturing in the U.S. or the whole thing with the Nexus Q, how it was all built in San, in, in San Jose or wherever it was built. Um, but, you know, when I think of Google, I think of services, I think of software, and I think of building on that and building really elegant ways to, for Chrome and Android and all these things to work together. And yeah. I'm with you. I think I'm, ex I'm more excited to see those innovations than an another tablet. How many companies are making tablets? I, I think there's more room for innovation on the service level, too, than the hardware level. We're yes. pretty yeah. much at the 
capability of all these devices. Cool. They can, you say you say that slab. you say black that as slab. you as you took your glasses off to do the show. I mean, they're, 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 they're innovating on the hardware side too. But yeah, right, but it's yeah, a different yeah. type yeah, of thing. Though. Exactly. I, I, yeah. I don't really need a new phone. Right. Right. But, but you know, the risk is, like, I, I agree, I like to see Google play to its strengths, which is definitely services, but the risk that you take is when you have a big show like this, especially when you have the, sh the show that they had last year, I mean, there, there are going to be a lot of announcements about how developers can integrate Google Plus sign-in into their apps, and how is that going to play in the press? Mm, yeah. You know, yeah, it's not quite I mean, as sexy. It's, not, it's yeah. not quite as sexy. It's not mm -hmm. quite the same. But it's a developer um, conference, though. It's a developer conference. Right. I completely agree that it should be a developer conference. It was a little bit too, too much like, oh, here are the lines from people trying to pick up their free stuff last year. Oh, Oh, that, that was developer brutal. stuff. Yeah. So as developers, I think we all want to see them tone it down a little bit so that yeah. this isn't the, you know, three-ring circus that nobody can get tickets to or anything. Maybe right. it becomes a developer conference that we can maybe get tickets to. And well, they've right. clearly already cracked down on it considering that they've eliminated some people from attending, like myself. <laughs> so, um, you know, clearly they won't, you know. And um, Well, word is that they actually did cut down the number of press yeah, badges they that did, they yeah, give out yeah. because there are just aren't going to be oh, that no. many devices to I, review. I, I, talked, I talked to a couple of people uh, from Google recently, and I was like, oh, so you're going to be in town? You want to get drinks or something? And, like, and somebody, one of my uh, friends who works in New York, he's like, no, I, can't, I couldn't get a ticket for that. Like a Google employee, and he's like, yeah, I had a couple of like key kind of business partners who couldn't get in that wanted to get in. I, I couldn't get them ticket comp tickets. Like it was their crackdown and focused on the development side of things. So mm -hmm. I, I, that's right. I mean, I'm on the short end of the stick because I didn't make it in, but I think that's fair. I think that's the I agree with you. I think it's the way yeah, it should I, be. Yeah, so. I understand yep. mm -hmm. what they're going I, I, I mean, I'd probably like to see them not give away any devices, actually. So maybe next year we could. You don't want the Oprah moment? Uh, you get uh, well, a tablet. Uh, I mean, of course I do because I'll be yeah. there. But um, <laughs> I, I would also like it to be so maybe I could get a ticket next year. Yeah. yeah. I, right. I'd, I'd actually right. much rather go and not get any gadgets than not be able to. Yeah, well, see, they all. do that. Then uh, demand for next year goes down. And then next year, they yeah. go low. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the, and, I mean, the question is, where is the value? Is the value in getting your hands on a tablet so that you can develop against or the day of programming and the fireside chats and all the stuff that you get as a developer? Sure, yeah, it's kind of like, know, what's, like, what's right. the overarching point? Why yeah. does this conference uh, exist in the first place? Right. And mm -hmm. this is the, definitely a focus on... And an answer is a lot of forward. times actually being at I.O., you get early access to the APIs yep. and yes. things like that. And that's where the benefit comes for sure. me. The device is not so much. I'm not a device. Uh, I don't review well, devices or anything, but early access to APIs, that's what I care about. Although, give you a t-shirt, and you'll, you're, you'll, you're, you're right there, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, I like a t-shirt, yeah. yeah, as you can see. <laughs> Look, t-shirts are comfortable. It is nice to get a device that's running the, the newest version of Android, so you can see it right away, yeah, versus sure. running it in a yeah. simulator or whatever. I mean, that is yeah. nice. I remember cracking open the Nexus 7 last year and being like, oh, this is what the, you know, jelly bean looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is nice, but but I agree. It is this kind of Oprah moment, and I've sort of toyed with the idea of like, well, should you have to prove that you have an app in the Play Store, or that you've actually made something using Google API? in order to get a ticket at all. I mean, that gets really sticky, you know. Mm -hmm. it gets, that gets tough, but I've thought about that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we're definitely getting back to um, our predictions here in a few minutes once we kind of round out the news. So hang tight. We're not going to stop talking about I.O. Maybe you're already sick of it. <laughs> It'd be hard we'll not let you to. know when it happens. You could fast forward 10 minutes if you're, if you're done with I.O. But uh, a few things before we get there. Uh, Google was showing off uh, some Google Plus content recommendation stuff uh, that is hitting actually both Android and iOS in the browser. Content creators can now add code to their pages that actually enable Google Google to serve up related content, uh, pulling from the user's uh, G Plus account. Uh, as I said, Android and iOS users can enable the feature. Site owners who, who wish to take part can add that line of code to their site so cool. uh, to add the feature to the page. And what the visitor will see is a notification on the bottom of the browser uh, that kind of pops up when they're at you know a page that has this code enabled. Clicking that will take them to a recommended, uh, recommended content based on that current page. And they say they're doing that to keep kind of the quality of these recommendations high. So uh, not necessarily in, you know, app related, but in, in oh. the browser. And that's still cool because a lot of people still choose to do a lot of this stuff in the browser. Yeah. So. I mean, that, and that's, and that's, it's funny because as I'm watching that, as someone who is a content creator and looks for interesting ways to, you know, get more people to read their content, things like that, that's a really cool impl implementation. And it makes me kind of get a little sad because I feel like Google Plus is the social network I really emotionally want at the wrong time. You know, in terms of that, Wait, because none, none of my friends are using it. Mm. None, I mean, aside from our community, our wonderful community, and, and you guys, mm -hmm. like my friends outside of the tech sphere, all roll their eyes and say, oh, forget Google now, uh, Google Plus. And, it's perfect and for tech news. It's perfect It's perfect for tech news, but for <laughs> social stuff, everyone's on Facebook. Yeah. Everyone's on Facebook and Twitter. And so, like, had, you know, like, so it's like, 
I want to use all this stuff and I really want to embrace it. But like a social network's only as good as the, your network that is on it. Yeah, and I so, think the perfect example of what you're talking about right yeah. there is, um, and this is kind of going off on a tangent from this, but but kind of related is was that last year's I/O where they released the um, the event photo. I can't yep. remember what they called that, but um, the everybody the party, at an mode. Event, the party, party mode, mode. Yep. party yep. mode, right? Yep. Where you where you, everybody that has an Android phone and a Google Plus account launches into party mode around a single event, and then all the photos that anybody takes individually uploads mm. to a center part, you know, page for that event. And that's like the perfect thing that I would love to have. The problem mm. is the people that I end up with at parties, aside from Google I.O. parties, I guess, right. um, <laughs> you know, the, like I did that once. We actually had a party at our uh, at our house, like a mm. barbecue, and I did it. No one did it. it was no just one did me. it. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was just me, and I think my wife took a picture, and of course, I'm the one that program, you know, set it up on her phone. So. Yeah. Um, that would be great in these situations. Google Plus has a, a lot to a lot of ground to kind of cover to get to that point. Yep. Yeah, it's it's that thing. I mean, I think this is a harbinger. I think that Google I.O. is going to be a lot about pushing Google Plus, Google Plus sign-in, yep. integrating mm -hmm. with Google Plus. I just don't know what the developer kind of reception is, right? There's this weird mm -hmm. thing, right? I, like, it's what Google wants developers to do for them and what developers want need Google to do for them. And the thing is, is that I'm kind of meh about Google Plus for the reason that you said. My networks mm -hmm. really aren't on it yet. So. It depends on the services they provide through Google Plus. So I could see if they provide full forum functionality, right? That could be really useful or uh, it, it depends on the functionality they provide to me as a right. from Google yeah, and, Plus. And, but, and I agree, but I think is I think that they've got parity in terms of functionality, in terms of what's available and comparing to, I mean, honestly, it's Facebook. I mean, that, those are the kind of two. But the mm -hmm. Facebook has so, had so many years of adoption in front of it and people have, I mean, the, there's a reason why they rolled out that timeline and all that stuff because they recognize you've got five years of data in here, of photos yeah. in your life and stuff like that. To get, it's like it's almost like needing to move house, and nobody wants to move, you know. And so mm -hmm. they, um, they have to do things that get out of plus.google.com. So yeah. like embeddable comments on people's yeah. blogs, right? Yes. Like Google Plus yeah. Power yeah, comments. And that's exactly what comments, yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, things yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. make people go, oh, I want to engage here. Oh, it just happens I have to sign in with my Google account. Right. You know, they're not like, oh, I'm gonna make a Google Plus account. That those will be good things. In fact, yeah. I'm excited about. I mean, comments work now. I don't think that they sort of officially announced that anybody can embed comments everywhere, but it does work, I think. Yeah. Um, they, they enabled it in Blogger. I'm sure we're going to hear more about, about that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't well. be surprised at all, too, yeah. So. Cool. So um, moving on, though, a little away from Google I.O., but, uh, you know, part of probably Google I.O. will be Google's performance and its, oh, yeah. uh, you know they're its gonna moment start in the marketplace. Yeah, so last week on last week's episode, we talked about the tablet penetration and how, how strong Android was representing in tablets. Um, this week, Gartner released their... Uh, First quarter of 2013 uh, market research reports, and surprisingly, Android is accounting for 74.4% of all smartphone units in the marketplace. So you want to talk about Android dominance, nearly 75% of all smartphones are Android now. Even more so, Samsung's got 30.8% of the, of that smartphone market. So we often talk about how, how much of a juggernaut Samsung's becoming and is it a danger to Google and all that stuff. Samsung is outperforming Apple. They're outperforming LG. They're outperforming Huawei, or however you pronounce that. Huawei. Um, Huawei. Huawei. <laughs> Huawei. Um, and Android is taking over, which is, I mean, I, I did not, I, I knew it was growing pretty strong and its market share has been increasing 17.5% uh, year, year over year. But at 75% of the marketplace, that is dominance. That is crazy. Um, so were we surprised by that number, or did you think it would be no that high? <laughs> Which no, is probably I was why surprised. there's not a whole lot to say about it. Yeah. It's like the, the, uh, the, the numbers keep coming, and we keep seeing kind of what we've expected because we keep seeing it. You know right. what I mean? It's like a snake eating its own tail at this point. It's yeah. like these stories come out, and they're great, and I want to talk about them on the show, but then it comes along, and it's like, okay, still dominating. Yep. Still well, doing good. It was interesting, though, in that, in that Levy interview with Bachai, he said, uh, you know, you're dominating the market, and yet Apple's making way more money than you are. And Bachai yeah. said, well, we're perfectly comfortable with our business model. We just want to get get Android into everyone's hands, and we want people searching Google and using YouTube, and, and, and we're comfortable with that business yeah, model. It's, right? it's, so a, they're, it's they're, a different business model. It's I mean, a diff yeah, totally different yeah, business model, right? Because yeah. that's always the answer. Well, sure, market dominance, but they're not making, you know, they're yeah, making the money. absolutely. Right. I mean, App, Apple is a hardware company. I mean, they happen to have software services. They have an operating system. They, they have all the app stuff and all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, they're making their money off selling those phones, and they're selling the phones at a high price point, whereas Google has, is a software company. They've licensed an OS. They're getting a cut of the app sales. App sales are growing. The revenue will come. Google, if anything, has shown their patience with revenue. You know, mm -hmm. like, we, I mean, how, what, 10 years ago, we were like, How's Google going to make any money on ads? And and now right. it's it, they clearly they proved that they worked. figured it so, out. Did they yeah. made a little bit of money. Yeah. They made yeah. a little bit of money. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, just a little bit. 
Uh, uh, well, uh, let's talk about Google I.O. predictions. We uh, kind of all independently kind of did some thinking around what we expected to see, what we you know think might be possible, and then kind of out there, bat mm, crazy uh, <laughs> predictions. Uh, but we kind of put together a little list here. I guess we can just kind of go through it and, and list off. Well, like what we're expecting, I mean, yeah, so in terms of what we're expecting, um, wh which, you know, if you're going to put money down, these are probably safe bets. Um, we're not going to see Key Lime Pie. If anything, we're going to see Android 4.3 Jelly Bean improvements. Yeah, it's you know. kind of what the server log, you know, server logs have been saying supposedly, yep. but mm -hmm. it's going to always be faked. But the, the, the question will be, will they tease Key Lime Pie? Will they talk about what's coming? Mm -hmm. Will they do some sort of future kind of like down the road possibility you know, thing? Yeah, you know, what, not even... you know what they'll probably do is they'll probably unveil this and they'll be like, and on the horizon, and then they'll show you the pie. Yep. And then that's all that they're going to yeah. say. Yeah, and it'll you know, get, that'll get... No, that'll but, get everybody going, Wee! Yeah, no, but is there's the, a pie up on the screen. <laughs> yeah. But is it, a, is it a bad thing? I mean, I, I, for one, think that if they were rolling out Android 5.0, I'd be like, all right, let's, let's, let's slow down. Let's slow your roll. No, you know, let, I, yeah. think, I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, it keeps I'm them on sure their one major per year mm -hmm. uh, updates. Yeah, be. although it was a year ago, basically, that we got Jelly Bean. It was last, well, it was, yeah. last June, so yeah. we are coming well, up on a year. But I really can't think of yeah, much right. that I need out of Android. It's It really has matured. And that's why the focus on services more yep. than on the software. Yeah, it seems like now yeah. Android's really mature. And there's mm -hmm. no, no real pressing things that we need. There's bug fixes, the Bluetooth stack, things like that. But as far as major features go, I don't know there's anything I really need... Right, the last big new features were things like face unlock and the and the swipey keyboard, which are cool. But also, I found myself going like, "Whoa, this isn't yeah. a core OS." Kind, kind, kind of kind of entering this? into yeah. Samsung. Yes, yeah. exactly. Land. We're yeah. like, okay, I guess that's neat. That made a good presentation on stage, but well, as long as you use face unlock, as well, as long as face unlock doesn't take two gig of memory. <laughs> yeah, right. That you can't uh, remove. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So we probably will. Android will just stick with a uh, with another dot release of Jelly Bean and minor improvements and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's so. Uh, Babel slash what we're hearing now is called Hangouts. The yeah. unified yeah. messaging yeah. platform. Unified messaging. Messaging. Oh, so it's, it won't be called Babel the or Babel. It's going to be just called, just called Hangouts. I've been, I've been seeing lo yeah That's lots of heard. lots of reports around uh, around Hangouts being the actual. When I read that when I read that picture. that clicked for me and I'm like that makes sense because. Babel sounds like an in like a inside code word, it's like we're working on Project Babel, name. that sort of thing, you know. Whereas Hangouts, they've already built up a, 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 that as a brand, as and a it's thing. a very strong, yeah, kind of uh, service that yeah. they offer, and it's also yeah. communication based. Exactly, so it yeah. all kind of comes together. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I'm, I, I think that we've seen so much. We've seen screenshots. We've seen icons. I think this is absolutely going to happen. Slam whether, dunk. yeah, whether it's called Hangouts or not, we'll see. Game Center, of course, that that keeps coming up. Uh, the idea of having kind of a uh, universal kind of gaming zone for for sharing scores and yep. uh, across you know different games and everything. So that, that's cool. I'm I'm not a huge gamer, but it seems like a kind of a catching up style. Big update. revenue and growth opportunity for developers there, sure. right? Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If you have a big hit game. Yeah, that's great. And and also, I mean, things like the Ouya, you know, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> Android yeah, you wants know to be we, there yeah, and, and have it right have its there. own gaming center. Yep. Absolutely. Now this is now um this I, I I forgot about the possibility of Google Music getting some sort of an update. And then we had some news that broke just a little bit ago, actually, a little bit earlier, saying that Google now has Universal uh music and Sony for their streaming, and it's very, very possible that we'll see something around Google Music uh, around a streaming service. I would almost say... I or, would, sorry, a, uh, a subscription yeah, service. subscription service. I would almost say this is a lock. I would say, yeah. just based off of what we've heard from the, the deals with the record labels and Spotify and RDO and all those other competitors in the space and what they've been doing with Google Music, they're moving towards this, and so I would be very surprised that they don't announce that this is, ha is happening, this is what the price tier looks like. And you know, honestly, I'm I'm a Google Music user, and I use RDO for streaming and for subscri uh, from subscription base to try new albums before I buy them. Mm -hmm. They put that all on Google Music. I am done. Game over. That's my. That's where I'm going to live. I so. completely agree. Yeah. So, um, well, we said probably no hardware. Well, except except, except. Uh, the Nexus 7.2. Yeah, some, seven? some rumors of a it? of a new Nexus 7, um, probably with a faster processor. Um, whether there's gonna be any change, I've heard some change. I've I've read and heard some changes to the bezel, so maybe it's gonna be a little slimmer, a little thinner. Crisper screen. 
probably. Uh, same size screen, a uh, higher resolution screen with a smaller bezel and uh, thinner and lighter. So um, mm. the incremental improvements yeah, incremental like we're used update, to. Right. Um, but at the same time, we're talking that, you know, it would be hardware light at, at, at the, uh, mm -hmm. specifically the keynote. Yep. It would be kind of strange after past years for them to have absolutely no hardware Mm -hmm. to, to hand yep. over. I'm not, I'm not and maybe, well, we're maybe that'll get... end up happening. So in that case, it kind of makes sense that they'd, they'd be like, you know, you got the Nexus 7 last year. It was a huge hit. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, check out this new one that's coming. Here you go. New software, uh, new yeah. version of Android, exactly. thinner, lighter. Yeah. Yep. Whisper. Mm -hmm. Google Plus sign in. Uh, I didn't put this something here. Gina, you're big on this. The yeah, sign in. the Google Google Plus sign in. Yeah, which basically enables Google Plus integration with your app. Google seems big on this right now because they're incorporating um, app usage into their search results essentially. Uh, so you know they're getting information about what users are doing in apps, and what, as a developer, if you integrate this into your app, you are you you get access. You get hooks into all the different Google services and and, and user data. I think they're really going to push this this year. And in fact. Um, I think I could say this. We, we got, a, got an email from, from Google <laughs> PR. Um, Is it embargoed? Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I hope not. I don't think so. Um, but they're basically saying, hey, you know, our curtain raiser for tomorrow, we've got some great stats on Google Plus sign in, um, in enabling. Uh, let's see. Since launch, we're now finding that 40% people, 40% of people who are offered to install a website's mobile app accept. Uh, this is a significant benefit for consumers who can now easily access their favorite sites on the go, and developers who are experiencing greater mobile usage. They're basically trying to tell developers, if you enable Google Plus Sign in, your app will do much better. We'll get data. So I think this is going to be a big push tomorrow. Yeah. And and I think that that kind of ties in just with what we were talking about earlier with the general Google Plus push mm -hmm. with it, you know, and so built around the yeah. sign in and the goodies and the, the links, whether it's the commenting and, and how you can embed that, how you can further integrate uh, Google Plus into your own web applications and, and that sort of thing. I think, the, yeah, I think that's definite. And of course, identity and that yes. identity is the yeah. same across all your Android devices. Mm -hmm. So yep. that it really now ties you into the uh, Google Plus infrastructure, right? Your uh, Google Plus becomes your ID that you use in the Google world. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that certainly happen over the past year. Yes, we have. Yep. YouTube in particular, that, that kind of combined identity into the YouTube uh, comments section. Uh, Google Now Cards, That's that's got to be a lock right there. That yeah. We're going to see some like yeah. new cool stuff you can do with Google Now, the innovation that they you know unveiled last year. I think time. we'll see a lot of that. We'll probably see it in Chrome if yeah, that I'm doesn't hoping. exist yeah. yet. But yeah. I think yeah. uh, that's a surefire bet. They've mm -hmm. got a hit. Mm -hmm. with, you know. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised that there's some, you know, like some big thing that we haven't thought of. You know, like some way of integrating Google Now into the into the desktop, into the web experience. You know, there's rumors of it taking over IG. You know, the iGoogle, um, but in some way that we haven't thought of. Whether Google Now cards come up as you're browsing through the web. You know, we've already seen like when you go to Google on somebody's birthday or Google Google mm -hmm. Plus. Mm -hmm. You know, so whether that those cards are going to start. Pop, I'm I'm I, I I'm not setting any limits to how they're going to. Yeah. work that in to the experience because yeah. it's been such a success on the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, just to round out the list here, glass apps. Glass has been a huge deal. And, Glassware. Uh, yeah, glass Glassware. <laughs> is that actually a term you're <laughs> yes. using? Oh, wow, that is a term. Right. I wish I had thought <laughs> of that. I have so much to learn from you, Gina. <laughs> Clearly, you're, you are not mature. No, I only got a glass noob. Now. I'm a noob. Uh, <laughs> glass noob. noob. Uh, so I'm sure they're going to have, you know, some really cool apps, some developers that are creating cool things come up on stage and show off this cool new thing that you can do with Google Glass if you have it. Yeah, they're going to show innovations and things mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Uh, Chrome offline apps. Yeah, I, you know, I drop this in there. I feel like every year at I.O., you know, Sundar, generally, because he was head of Chrome, gets up on stage and talks about how there's, you know, Angry Birds has just been released or some big yeah. game or here's, you know, a there's platform for developing awesome apps. And I feel like acceleration. This is, yeah, we've yeah, got yeah, all this cool yeah. stuff that you can do in Chrome apps. And, every, and you know, every year I, there aren't any Chrome apps that are really that I use. But this is part of, like, just the Chrome OS strategy, right? Like, mm -hmm. hey, you can live in the cloud. You can have your apps in, in tabs. So I just, I feel like we're going to probably revisit this again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Google uh, TV. I, I, I Google will TV. be very disappointed if there's nothing from Google yeah, TV. I, I, I think that um, I wouldn't. I'm not be, sure this is likely though. I don't know. After I feel like they're after, gonna have something, but it's not. They need. Be. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They need to recoup from next to the Nexus Q. The Nexus mm -hmm. Q has been a failure. Has yeah. been. A, it was. It's like a punchline now. And so what they need to show. What they need to. And this is gonna get into the the next prediction that we have, which is one I added. Um, but they're gonna say, listen, we need to get a footprint into the home. 
and Google TV is our entryway. And we've already seen Samsung rolling out a product that does it. We've already seen, you know, very, you know, other set top boxes and other variations that are cropping up. Google's going to want to be a little more aggressive at that. They have their own. They were the leader in this. So they need to come back now and reset the bar as to what can be done with it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we see any hardware, whether or not we see any new integrations with Sony or with um, any of the other manufacturers that they, you know, whether it's LG or whomever that we're that they were working with, whether it's in TV or in set top box or whatnot. Um, but I, I'm I'm expecting I've got big expectations for Google TV as a as a product cycle, um, f f uh, rolling into the idea of Google Home. This idea of home automation, your home run mm -hmm. runs on Android. Android playing you know playing in with your lighting, with your you know all those kind of you know home hacker kind of stuff that we've seen mm -hmm. being run from a Google TV you know uh, TV kind of set top box that controls everything. Right, right. So I think Google TV and Google Home are going to be a big, there's going to be, I don't know if, hopefully it's not going to be like last year with that cheesy skit in the living room with the Nexus Q, but there's going to be some <laughs> sort of like, I wouldn't be surprised if they roll out a home, like a living room and show what you can do. And mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're on the ball with that. And I think there's big opportunity right now if they're able to capitalize on that because yep. there really isn't a good... Um, there is really isn't good hardware to do that now, no. yeah. and we yeah. all want it. And 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 the thing is that the hardware's been out there, and you can get stuff at Best Buy and get stuff online. I know, I'm sure the chat room and everyone we know has millions of you know open source things, stuff like that. But the question is, how do you get my brother-in-law, who is just a normal dude, who who yeah. to go into Best Buy or to Home Depot, and he's gonna see Google? Oh, that's a brand I trust, and then and then make it all work. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. controlling your heat, like Nest-like uh, functionality, like that, it's going to be interesting. So one last piece I'd like to see in the new Google TV, this is like my hope, is it, there's also a controller. So replace the Ouya with this Google well, that, TV hey, that controls our you're, home. You're jumping, you're jumping, the, the, you're, I know, you're I know, insane we're out of this world. Yeah. You're we're, stealing it, you're stealing it. I know, we were supposed to do that later, but um, <laughs> that's what I love. Because yeah. I'm a real Google TV uh, yeah. Lover to have added quite a few of the different boxes, and yeah. I'd love to see that product grow into something much bigger. As I think, yeah, 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 I'll, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So mm -hmm. I'll save it and then we'll, I'll, I'll expand for that. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry, so we, got some, the gun. we got some maybes. Yeah, we got some maybes. Um, Google Plus Write API. Well, you know, it's been on the to do list for it years. Has. It really has. <laughs> it might as well do it sooner or later. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like yeah. it's probably indicative that it's never going to happen because I haven't done it yet. But, you know, a girl can dream. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, I completely understand that. Uh, Google X Phone. Yeah. Probably a the pretty Motorola unlike. Google. I, yeah, the I don't know, Google man. I don't I, 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 months of pipeline, man. Uh, yeah, I think they're gonna show. I think they're gonna show something. I think they're gonna show, yeah, they're gonna show it. They might yeah, they might show the reveal something like they, you've, they, heard, you've heard about the X phone. Every you know, and every the and interview we'll ship with you in six months. Yeah, like right. yeah. <laughs> the, the interview. With, well, who knows? But the interview yeah. with Sundar. The the every article mentions. Mo well, why isn't Google doing more Motorola? Why aren't they? Th th so they're gonna address the Motorola thing in some way. You know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. although it. Sundar said yeah. that they consider Motorola just like any other yeah, Android partner. platform, yeah. but that that was just him just trying to make sure that no one feels threatened. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? By their ownership. Uh, we mentioned we, it a little bit ago. Google now to the desktop, yeah. yeah. And then um, there's also been uh, some rumors out there about uh, Google Wallet. Um, I put in the doc Google Wallet something something because something, something. Like, it's going to be like something something Google that. Wallet. Uh, you know we've heard you know <laughs> we've heard everything from you know from some sort of just a, a, a just an update to the UI or an update to, to the way it works to news of them scrapping the physical card that we heard about right. a few months ago. Yeah, yeah it didn't exist. Right? Yeah, yeah, it never existed. So yeah, so but they'll, plans. For they'll it. do they'll do in the in the great uh, Simpsons vernacular Google Google Wallet something something something. Excellent. So. Uh, and then, you know, we keep hearing little rumors about the white Nexus 4 that like, keeps appearing. It's mm. possible. I'm not saying yeah. that it's going to happen, but it's a, it's a possibility yeah. if Google really felt like they needed to round out some sort of hardware to kind of keep pace with the previous years. Yeah. That might be something that they might, yep. might do, but I, I, I don't know. I think we'll see a Nexus 4 with LTE. Yeah, I right, th I right. think that's yeah. the yes. device we're going to see tomorrow. Which... But will it be white? Yeah, no, that I don't know. <laughs> That's the question, really. That's on everyone's mind. Yeah. What color will it be? Next side. All right, next let's side. do the insane uh, wish list. I, well, let, let me lead this off. Yeah, so, so, so you kind of have a as, as you mentioned, you know, a, a, some sort of controller, a game like controller. I think with Game Center coming, with things like Ouya happening, with things like that, you're going to see Google enter the home video game market in a big way. Not just a controller, but a Google TV Game Center hybrid box that will rival Xbox, PlayStation for a spot in the home. Um, do some of the home so automation kind stuff. Kind of doing with, a Microsoft Xbox. Yeah, but with a focus thing. on gaming mm -hmm. and it's going to be streaming, it's going to be stuff like that. And then furthermore, I'm going to add a cherry to the to the top of this prediction. 
Um, Electronic Arts, the next Star Wars game on Android. Oh, interesting. That, that would that would get some buzz. It's right Bay now. Area. Yeah. Everybody, you know, like it's been the news a lot. I think they're going to come out there and they're going to play the Imperial March and they're going to show the next episode seven game. <laughs> and ties it. into the draw, the Android. Yep, droids. exactly. Yeah. yeah, they'll bring it. They'll roll out. They'll get some of the five hundred first. They'll roll out an R two D two and they're going to announce a Star Wars game on the <laughs> on the Android platform. You're a smart man. For a guy who said he had nothing on the drive up here, that's a very well formed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, where is this coming from? <laughs> Ron just told me in the car that he had no idea what his prediction minds. was. And now he's got the whole marketing plan sorted out. And if it totally Dang. comes true to a T, I'm wondering about you, Ron. Like, what the heck do you know? Because that's crazy. Well, it was a wild idea, but I think it's... It's, it's, um, it's within the realm of possible. Yeah. So that's my out of this world. I would love to see that. So there's at least yeah. two of us. I'd love to see... A Three hundred dollar Google TV box, yeah. something quality that is actually functional. We did last year. Well, it was called the. Oh wait, yeah. no, that wasn't. But see, the thing, it was see, just see, but the thing, the thing about that is that I think the chances of that are less now because I think now it needs to be more, and it's either going to be the home automation plus home automation thing or the video game angle. I think I think that just Google TV I don't think is enough anymore. Right, right. Yeah. I agree. I, I'm, yeah. What I would love to see is a really good quality three hundred dollar Google TV box that does home automation and gaming. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, and exactly. then I'm the happiest guy in the world. Yeah. I really didn't have a whole lot, but the one thing that I thought would be pretty awesome is if they said, all right, for all the people that were there last year and got a Nexus Q, we're rolling out a firmware uh, update <laughs> that may, suddenly makes it awesome and gives you uh, full, full one, access without really, the need to root it. it that really would be is awesome. the insane out of this world. No. Yeah. Never I, gonna I don't happen. expect that to happen. That's why it ended <laughs> yeah. up in that part. Uh, what do you have down there, Gina? Well, you know, I went to go see Iron Man this weekend, and I regretted not having my glass on during the movie because, of course, the Iron Man suit and one of the coolest parts about it is that it's a heads-up display. So I don't know. I got to start, start thinking, you know. I would love you know, an Android-powered Iron Woman suit. I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. And a I like helmet, that. And yeah. I would like to serve for it. And then it's a heads-up display. Yeah. I want Google yeah. Now cards on my, yeah. on my Iron Woman suit. That's almost as possible as Ron. <laughs> 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 I think I think my last hey, insane insane out of this world is the one I was originally referring to in the car is that nothing's gonna blow our mind. It's gonna be a bunch of uh, app updates and it's gonna be really boring. It's gonna be like the second day keynote last year. Oh, remember where is it? They're, they're like, oh, and we've got this support. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember the second day last year they redid the skydive, yes. and everyone in the hall was like, was that really? They're Did oh, I? it's the same. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. They're doing the same thing yeah, again. That yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it was, it was weird. a little weird and yeah. awkward. Yeah. For sure. uh, um, I don't think it's going to be disappointing. I think, I think that's I my think it's going to be different. Yeah. I think there will be one surprise that we didn't see coming. Just yes. like the yeah. Nexus Q last year, nobody could have even. Well, yeah, but we didn't want to see that coming. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's cool at the keynote <laughs> until we got it home and yeah. realized that. Because yeah, that's the thing is you got to realize that there's there's an intense R and D aspect to this company, and whether it's whether it's the SpaceX program or the self driving car, the self driving car. Oh, mm. one under every seat, Jetson style. You just yeah. don't hold it like wallet size. Interesting. A, 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 a self-driving car will jump out of an airplane yeah, and good. land <laughs> on top of Moscone. Yeah. <laughs> and then drive down the and wall. Drive down to the <laughs> um, Divine gravity. Go. Before we move on. I have one, too, before we move does, on. Does Chad, does Chad have any car. productions? Um... I didn't, but I could throw one together. I think I think that uh, Andy Rubin, you know, he moved away from Android, yep. and so they're going to like they did with. I, sorry, I don't even have a camera on myself. Right. Um, uh, like they did for uh, Android, they will release a teaser video that talks all about how they're actually getting into robots. That's that's Droid, my guess. Yeah. Actual yeah, robots Robot, from robot, Google, yeah. right? And then it'll integrate in with everything. I mean, just absolutely. So Google Plus sign-in will be integrated. The Google TV Home Box, the Google at Home in project, all of it. It's just it's like a big Jarvis sort of brain um, yes. network yes. that that works together just to help you out. That's that's my right. prediction. I'd say that that's pretty likely, actually. Uh, I, I think so. I mean, robot, that's, I wouldn't say it if I didn't think. No, all of it tomorrow, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Good prediction, Chad. No, thanks. I had no idea what we were in store for there. <laughs> <laughs> Fly by the seat of your pants, and I like it. Ma Michael, you got one last one? Uh, one last one. I think we may see a watch. A uh, watch? Ooh, you know the what? watch oh, wars. Yeah, like yeah. Glass. Oh, see, uh, glass I'm functionality. excited about that. So you think the watch might be the Nexus Q of tomorrow's? Maybe. Mm. I think obviously nothing, nothing should be the Nexus Q. Nothing. <laughs> well, let's yeah. I hope it's the Nexus yeah. Q. Yeah. Let's and hope then, it's the yeah. And then in the unexpected, what right, the heck right, is right, this right. department from totally. that? Yeah, yeah. But not anything beyond that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be right about something. I'm pretty. <laughs> yeah. Something. <laughs> I don't know what. We know something will be announced. All I know is that I don't know nothing. <laughs>
If they right. roll out an R two D two in there and I'm not there, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, oh. oh well, we'll uh, we'll take pictures and yeah, we'll send it thanks. to you. It'll be just like being there awesome. from your glass, right? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, let's take a quick break and thank our sponsor for today's episode, Gazelle. This episode is sponsored by Gazelle. If you want the new Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, or maybe the HTC One or really any Android phone, before you upgrade, make sure and sell your smart, your used smartphone or your gadget to Gazelle. And you can get cash, actually, from Gazelle. You can find out how much you can get by going to gazelle.com today. That's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. Dot com. They make the selling of your used gadget just fast and simple. It's just super easy. If you go to the site, you tell them the condition of your device, risk-free offer for your gadgets that they provide for you right there and then. And that actually, uh, that quote is locked in for 30 days. So you lock it in. You have 30 days to actually go through the process of sending them your gadget. So if you think you might want to get rid of your gadget and upgrade to something new, um, you can just do this now. Lock in the price because devices don't get, uh, you know, they, they don't appreciate in value over time. They actually depreciate in value. So you want to lock in that price as early as possible. You get paid in cash. Payment is super fast within a few days of the item being received, and it's risk-free. Um, they also actually will wipe your data for free uh, if you don't want to do it yourself. And they're very trustworthy. Uh, Gazelle has paid $100 million to over 500,000 customers, and that's just be plain and simple because it's easy and uh, you know it's just it's super easy to kind of get on the site and see what they can do for you and they make a lot of people happy so uh, free shipping fast processing no listing hassles uh, just a lot and a lot of great devices that they uh, will take and uh, you know on the site the s2 the s3 the one X the HTC one X the droid razor uh, you know older devices as well as newer newer devices just Kind of behooves you to just go there and check it out and see what you can get for your old device. What is your iPhone, your Samsung, or your other Android smartphone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. That's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. And you can sell your used Samsung Galaxy or iPhone today at Gazelle. We thank Gazelle so much for their support of All About Android. Continued support. It's great to have you guys on board. All right, we've got a lot of show uh, in of store show. for us still. <laughs> Let's dive right into hardware. I absolutely, I absolutely love this next story. Um, you, you I revel do. In it. Oh, I revel in it. Not, not only because, because it's like, it's like a combination of, of it's, it's about Facebook Home and it's about hardware, but it's also about the blogosphere and bad journalism and yeah, all that and rolled kinda, into one. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> it's, it's hard to say whether this is actually a story or. Not. Oh, it's totally a story, and I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with it. Um, so, uh, so as we know, Facebook Home rolled out, and part of the announcements of Facebook Home rolling out was the launch of the HTC First, which was the Facebook phone, which was a phone that would ship with um, Facebook Home integrated. So uh, the website BGR.com reported that. Uh, the sales have been so bad on the HTC First that they are discontinuing it. Um, to quote exactly from the article here, they say that it wasn't a good sign when AT&T dropped the price of the HTC First to 99 cents just one month after its debut. True. But now BG BGR has confirmed that HTC and HBook's little experiment is nearing its end. Uh, BGR has learned from a trusted source, a trusted source, the sales of the HTC First have been shockingly bad, so bad, in fact, that AT&T has already decided to discontinue the phone. Further down, it says that AT&T has sold fewer than 15,000 units nationwide through uh, through last week when the phone price was slashed to 99 cents. So that then got everybody scrambling because th that we love a failure. We love a we love to build people up and tear them down. So then other folks get on the beat. Now CNET comes comes on and CNET uh, reacts to the story and says, Ah, not dead yet. Um, they got in touch with um, they 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 did their own yeah. sources, and according to CNET, according to quote a person familiar with the carrier's plans, they said I am not aware of any discussion ever taking place about sending the phones back to or stop selling the first. Said a person intimately familiar with the dealings between AT and T and HTC. Um, so who that person is, who knows? But then we now knock the ball That's back to BGR.com, and they updated their posts. <laughs> um, and if you scroll down, chat at the bottom of the post. Um, they reached out to H to HEC to get um, a comment from both HEC and AT&T. They declined to comment, but then after the CNET article, um, AT&T contacted them and said, as mentioned previously, we do pricing promotions all the time and have made no decisions on future plans. So Tempest in a teapot, yeah. dancing around the grave. They saw a 99 cents uh, phone and I mean, assumed the worst. I mean, who knows uh, whether this is, is true or not, but 
99 cent discount on a phone that just came out a month ago. Not a good not sign. That wasn't the discount. Good, that was the price. That was the price. Right? Yeah. 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 They're calling it a, pr- a, 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 a pr- <laughs> pricing promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is yeah. quite a promotion. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that it had gone down on yeah. 99 cents. Well, I mean, it seems like Facebook made the right decision well, by releasing Home in the Play Store. Well, absolutely, absolutely that. Yeah, because that was the mistake they made with the with the with what was it? The status. The status. The cha cha. Yeah, but um, but in this case, I mean. It's either not selling well, so they're going to slash the 99 cents to move product, or they're going to slash 99 cents to get it in the hands of people. You know, and like, depending on, yeah. you know, like who knows, you know, but and I'm curious who BGR's original source was that said that they were stopping and what made them feel confident enough to go forward with this and then the reaction, the ripples through the blogosphere. I mean, if that's true, that's, that's got Ken written all over it. Yeah. What, what were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe the target audience, which is, you know, teenagers probably yep. can afford a 99 yeah. cent phone better than they can a 200. So puts Either the phone in the hands of people. Contract, though. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gets, gets a phone with it. I mean, it basically costs nothing. I love it, though. Please keep, keep misreporting. <laughs> Yay, journalism. <laughs> Uh, the NVIDIA, am I saying that correct? It's NVIDIA, NVIDIA right? yeah, yeah, the yeah. NVIDIA Shield is launching in June, $350. This is the little handheld flip-up controller gaming device. Um, the, the Shield will give gamers access to an array of gaming avenues. Uh, NVIDIA has Tegra Zone, it'll be Google Play and access to Steam. This is interesting because Google Play has a whole new gaming center and gaming, gaming area. This will, this will benefit the Shield. Uh, system's got a Tegra 4 processor, 16 gigabytes memory, GPS, Bluetooth, mini HDMI output. Um, it's got a 5-inch 720p multi-touch display, and it's a cool-looking uh, looking gaming device. We looked at this a while back. I, I'll yeah. be honest, I'm not a huge gamer. I mean, when I think Android gaming, that I think of the Ouya, which we'll talk about a l- little bit more. But the the Shield is just it's a cute little thing. And it, it also can plug into a TV, so you and don't need to you don't need to use that little div- that little screen. But three hundred fifty dollars. Three fifty seems like a lot to yeah, me. Yeah, it does. Seem I, like I a feel lot. like for three hundred fifty dollars, I need something bigger than a controller. Yeah, I mean that's what it looks like, right? Yeah, it looks yeah. like a flip up controller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can really accomplish the same thing by hooking a PS3 controller up to your phone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which will yeah, with that little thing. Significantly thing. less. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not clear on what version of Android this runs, if this is like a forked Kindle Fire type situation or if this is just a It looks pretty skinned, custom. It looks like a custom uh, job. Yeah, it does look like a custom job, which right. might not be such a good thing. But if it's got Google Play on it. Right. Yeah. Then it's official right? enough. Right? It's got to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's got official enough. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I think the price point's a little too high. Still a cute, cute little device. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of the trend, you know, the the growing trend right now are, are gaming devices around Android. This is another one. It's, it siphons itself off uh, to, you know, obviously just the greater uh, Android kind of offerings through Google Play, but also being able to play the Tegra 4 games, which other devices aren't going to be able to do unless, of course, yep. they run a Tegra 4. So I guess it has that going for it. But is that enough to boost it up to $350 levels? Again, you know, it doesn't sound like any of us are, are like hardcore gamers to, yeah, to evaluate. We're, but we're probably not the target audience for this. But right. I think there probably really, is a target audience. Yeah, there there is. I just wonder if three hundred. I don't know if there is, is. good for them. <laughs> I mean, and and the reason I say that is because good, and traditionally in mobile gaming, there's someone behind it like Sony or Nintendo, where you're gonna buy a Game Boy and you're gonna get the hardware manufacturer is also the software manufacturer, and Nvidia sees this and expects them to have an, a, a, a Nintendo level of success, but I don't think they are because there's such a disconnect between Android and NVIDIA that yeah. most customers are not going to look at that device and think gaming. They're going to look at that device and think Android, which is not the same. Now, on Google I.O., there may, there's a big push, it seems, the rumors is for gaming, so that might change. It may be that they're making a really good bet here, and they're going to be a first mover in a category that Google is putting a lot of time on. As, as a gamer, $350 for a handheld device running Android games, appealing to you? It, yeah, yes, it can be yeah. appealing, because if you look at the PS Vita, how much is the PS Vita? Um, because if there, if there are killer things that I can only get on this device... Now that 350 bucks is the same for a console, but but the specs of this device, a 1080p screen. I mean, that's that's a real I mean, that could really be compelling, especially if they drop it down to the $200 price point. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Sweet. We have a gamer. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, don't be, don't be sorry. I'll throw myself in here. That's great. That's exactly. my favorite. Uh, 
I, I hope that you'll uh, you'll pitch in on the next one too because we're continuing down the gaming uh, path here. Uh, the Ouya gaming console launch, uh, official launch, delayed until June 25th. Ouya also secured 15 million dollars in new funding, so kind of the uh, the march for Ouya is is as strong as ever right now. And I venture to say they've they've done a pretty good job from from just a, a kind of a mindshare standpoint of of kind of pitching themselves as the mm -hmm. alt gaming system uh we actually have one in here thanks to uh, jeff needles who's sitting over there he brought it in you now jeff just real quick you you got this through the kickstarter campaign okay so jeff ordered it through the is kickstarter you, and is just your name it. etched on the side here no no no, no name etching on the side yeah. didn't donate millions but uh but jeff brought it in and <laughs> we played with it so briefly before the show so i won't be surprised if it, we kind of get tied up a little bit here but it is tiny, tiny. Yeah. look at this thing Look at this. It's really cute. It's adorable. And I love how the typography matches the little, the, like the yeah, yeah, the, the rounded. Chad, can we bottom cut into? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Look at that. So there. So you see, it's etched in there, but it says Ouya, right? And then it, yeah, it's, it's a little all box. All right. You got the. Is this the power button? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's on don't right now, so it. don't turn it off, please. The whole place. On the up. back, it's got. And it's Power, weighted, right? HDMI. It has some weight behind it. It's yeah. got some weight. Yeah, no. Is there weight in it? Didn't they put I, a weight? I think so yeah. because of the cable management. Yeah. They wanted to, to it's make got a sure fan it here at the bottom. Slide and, around. Yeah. It's got Ethernet, USB. Um, is that mini USB, I see? What is that one? Yeah, micro. Micro USB? Yeah, micro USB. Yep, and HDMI. And so. HDMI. So there it is. And then we have the system up here. We'll go, let's see here. Nice. We'll go, okay, I can read it now. My eyes must be getting better. <laughs> or it's a little bit larger. Um, so, yeah, so you can discover, of course, Ouya, it doesn't have access uh, out of the box to the Play Store necessarily. It's kind of curated games that developers have made for the Ouya. And that was kind of the point of the Kickstarter is so that developers would buy into it, get the, get the uh, development device, which is what we have here, and start to develop specifically for the Ouya. Uh, but they have, you know, some offerings there, I think, on the device. We'll go into, and go into play here real quick, and uh, I'll just I'll do FlashBot 3D, uh, which totally looks like a Wipeout clone. Yep. <laughs> right. There's much more in the full version, I hear. <laughs> but, uh, so but yeah. this is, uh, I mean, if, we're, if we want to go the gamer route, this Much is, more in the full version. Huh? Nothing going on. Okay. Um, uh, this is super compelling because it's 100 bucks. And if you can really get, if there is a title that would only ship exclusively on the Ouya that looks compelling, yep. I could easily see someone dropping $100 for it with the, with the expectation that there will be other games well, that yeah. will and be that, good and enough. That's, and that was my point about my crazy idea is that you're going to need a big game studio or a big name brand to bring right. them over. And I've been saying that how long, you, how long have I been saying that on the show? For yeah. months now. Yeah. That, 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 don't get me wrong. I love indie gamers. I love indie game developers. But what is this game called? I don't know. I right? forgot. Exactly. About exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but, but when you, but no, but hang on. But when you booted up, when you booted up the Ouya and I saw Final Fantasy on there, I went, oh, there's Final Fantasy on right. there. Right. Well, I mean, I, I feel like a word of mouth could get around that if there is if there is a game that is so great that all the other yeah. gamers are talking about it, it doesn't need to be a big, but they need to have a hit. Right. You're right. They need to have a hit to make this uh, become more than the $100 box that you could buy oh, yeah. if well, you wanted. Well, you have $99 for one really great yeah. game that you can only get on this, right? Epi episode right. 6.5. Death um, of the Empire or something, some sort of interstitial what, game. Star before Wars? The pre before the sequels. I'm telling you. I'm telling anything you. Anything with Star Wars. Anything it'll with just Star sell, Wars. I'm putting all my boxes. money on Star Wars, okay. baby. <laughs> yeah. This is it. It's a whole new world. Yeah. Lucas is out. This, it, I'm it, not a gamer, but this is this is cool. Oops. I, mean, this, <laughs> I want to play that. Not yeah. that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm yeah. awesome. Yeah. I don't even need I mean, to look at it. It looks really smooth. The graphics are nice, right? I'm very impressed with how good the graphics look. And, and, um, there's definitely a market just for this, but yeah. I feel like if it is going to expand beyond the low low cost market, there really does need to be a hit. I mean, and, and also when you're looking when you're looking in the video game world, right? What have we just seen? The, what was the last major release? The Wii U. It was a failure. Yeah. How much yeah. was that? Big time failure. Yeah, and it was hundreds of dollars, right? Yeah. And if you know, I, if I put on glass and just sort of move my head back, <laughs> I really wonder if there's going to be some sort of integrated <laughs> AR game 
aspect of glass. I think it's too early for that. I mean, I already saw somebody, so they, got, they got Ingress working on glass, didn't they? Oh. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that that's going to be... That's the ultimate heads-up game. There I will be a lot of, of Ingress, yeah. I think, at Google I.O. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I'm set, sure. They yeah, set yeah. up a giant Ingress game, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, they're going to put push that in. And my guess is they're probably opening it up to everybody. Yep. Would mm-hmm. be that There's going to be big announcements. Good job, player. Wow, Yeah, wow, nice wow. job, Jason. I was second to last loser. Wait, Duran, do you want to play now? I just want to use it. Okay. How do I get out? I mean, uh, but truly, in in the in the quick. Where's the home button? Uh, hold yeah, the home button. The yeah. Button. In the quick time that I got to touch it, it was very responsive. Yeah. The was, game yeah, that no. you were just playing looked. I mean, uh, describe how playing the game was, just like any other no, game. Yeah, it was. It was pretty responsive. There wasn't a you know a, a huge amount of lag that I could even detect. But you know, maybe that wasn't the right game to test that with, because with racing games, you kind of have a little bit of that drifting effect. That right. You know, sometimes it isn't like immediate you know, immediate turns. The a fighting you game would probably be a right. test. And then yeah. Jeff, do, do you buy like the- Ouya points or do you spend real money? No, they're, dollars. they're dollars. That's that's an, an excitement. Good. I hate freaking ooh, you keep point. it simple. Yeah, yeah keep exactly. it simple. I want to buy with real money. With dollars. Uh, so yeah, and I think I think overall, just kind of uh, the opinion about the Ouya has been pretty positive. So I think that's a, that's obviously an, a great opportunity for game developers to kind of come into a platform that might be a little bit easier to develop for. And if the platform just itself, the system itself has a lot of momentum, and it certainly has the mind share. Uh, of being kind of a, a cool little kind of alt gaming system, then a developer could create a great game and make a lot, you know? But, but is a little upstart like Ouya going to be able to compete? If, if Google really does roll out like an awesome game center tomorrow, yeah, with all kinds that's, of, that's like, a really good With point. all the leverage I, of all the Google products, like, is, does it have a shot? I know. Well, yeah, you know, probably, that's why I kind of wish not. that Ouya ran play, you yeah. know, the Play Store and didn't, you well, know. It would end play. up needing to do the, the, the Nook thing and like yeah, open it right. itself up right. to play to, to yeah. stay competitive. Exactly. But then at the same time, there, there must be some sort of compatibility kind of that they would have to do, or or maybe the developers would have to do to get like the controller to sing to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wish them the best. I think it's a really cool cool device. And Ron but you're is right. If Google came out with their own, I mean, yeah. Game over for Ouya. You, you, you don't want to be the people who just built a, a, a game a game center or a gaming store t- tomorrow yeah. <laughs> during the keynote. You don't want to be that person sitting in the totally, in the audience. Totally. Um, Here's but, the one thing against the Ouya. Which I love and everything, but I read and saw articles on the latency problem with the controller. And you're so you're seeing the latency. I'm now. feeling it big time. I wasn't. That's what I meant. Like the yeah. game that I was playing probably wasn't the Watch right this one to test the and poop. Wait, this thing has speakers. It's huh? coming from the. Oh, it's from the controller. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Right now we can't get audio because of our HDMI setup. No, yeah, but, okay. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, there, there's. I definitely feel it. Huh. And the controllers. Yeah. Yeah, the controller, when I did touch it, it just feel a little bit... A little janky. Plasticky. Kickstarter. A little bit plastic. But now, what you're saying with the... um, Not to drag this out too much longer, but what you're saying with the the game store... Ouya's already made their money, right? With Kickstarter? I'm sure they want to make more, but so far, Ouya is successful with that Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, but they that, just took 15 million in VC. Uh, they just yeah, took 15 yeah, million. they, they yeah, can't. Yeah. They're not gonna build a company on Kickstarter. That's, okay, you know, that Kickstarter. Great, don't yeah, get me started on Kickstarter. For launch, you know, it, it yeah. gets them. Yeah, off that the was ground. a launch. Yeah, okay, it gets good them. Point. It gets them money. It gets them notoriety. And Kickstarter is Kickstarter is less about. Uh, don't get me started on this. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have oh. opinions. That's oh, all. That's, yeah. Yeah. I like. I'm glad you have. Opinions. All right, Jeff. Thank Early you, man. This is cool. Yeah. This thank is, you yeah. for bringing yeah. that in, Jeff. That's yeah. awesome. I yeah. uh, really appreciate it. All right. Let's uh, waste no more time and get into apps. That was a boom. Uh, just real quick. Uh, probably the well, maybe not the last time that we talk about I/O. But if you are going to <laughs> I/O. You probably want to download the I.O. app, and they've updated it to be uh, the 2013, you know, for the 2013 schedule. Uh, it has a lot of a lot of cool things that you can do that are kind of new, scanning your badges via, via NFC. Schedule changes are immediately synchronized. There's a lock screen widget, which I can actually show off. So you can add that to your lock screen if you're on a Jelly Bean device and uh, always have the schedule just kind of hanging out there. I have it up on my phone right now, which I'll dialed down my brightness here of course uh but uh and now it's too dark (laughs) ah stop save me help okay there we go there's the schedule so you can have that on your lock screen and it's always there so you don't have to wait to launch into the app but the app also does kind of streaming of all the uh content google is going nutso with their live streaming of these uh these uh 
the talks and everything. So even if you're not there, you can still enjoy it. You can do that through the app as well. Uh, so download it if you're interested in I.O. or especially if you're going to be there. There's also maps built into it and everything. The other not, thing I'm about the I.O. app is it's generally a pattern definition um, product. So they release the app to show a new uh, UI design patterns. Um, so it's a good uh, developer reference. They That's open source the product. Nice. So. Yeah. And as we talked about, like the schedule changes, right? Right after the keynote, the schedule fills in with all different right. things. So, so it's much better than just mm -hmm. uh, using your badge or whatever. Right. That is an app I will not be downloading. <laughs> Fine. Oh, Sorry. That app doesn't Don't want you want to download, download it and rate it one star? You just out yeah, of Oh, yeah. I'm going to totally, yeah. I'm going to rate it one star. <laughs> Be a lot cooler if I was invited. there. Yeah, it wasn't invited. <laughs> Not cool, Google. We, we have to send Ron a, like, having a great time at I.O. Oh. We wish you were here. Uh, <laughs> we'll take pictures with our glass we'll to make sure we send him. If there's any sort of live demo going on, you have to text me and I'll get in there and, and spam it. <laughs> <laughs> Like they're doing some Google Now thing, like, go oh, here, quick. And I'll be yeah, like, right. yeah, it was a little more fun if I was there. Anyway, so. <laughs> Um, all developers can now reply to Google Play Store reviews. Finally. This is something that they've been having tested, have been have had in testing for quite some time. Some developers had it, some didn't. I was filled with envy and rage because I didn't have it for a while. But I was just looking at my Android, uh, or sorry, not Android Market. Whoa, flashback. <laughs> Play Store <laughs> app console here, and yes, I have a blue reply to this review below every review. This is really this is really awesome. I know as a developer, it's so frustrating when someone posts a review. It's says, I really wish that your app did this. When your app does do that, or if they describe an error that you just need a little more information, it's so much easier to reach out and say, hey. And, you know, as a user, it's really good to see how responsive a developer is by seeing how uh, they, they reply to reviews. So, um, so developers, yeah, get to talking to your users. Yeah, it's about, it's about time. I'm sure yeah. all developers are happy to finally have the capability to do that. Totally. And I, I've got a bunch of reviews to respond to. It, it works, too. I did have mm -hmm. um, a one-star review that says the app, the, the, after last update, app does not start. Yep. Uh, the app was fine. Uh -huh. I sent the guy an email, and, or I, uh, you know, responded. Send me a log hat. What do you want? Change that one you? star to a five star. It, nice. It works. Oh, and they can go back and edit. Right. You yep. can go back and edit uh, the so review and change it, it. It works. Yeah, and that's all public, right? So that's a great customer service, right? Yeah. It's customer service in public. Very cool. I'm. Uh, you're, are you going to call? Are you going to hit the button? I, I think so. I'm going to hit the big red button. Breaking news. Oh, man. Yeah, that's right, Chad. <laughs> man. <laughs> Why is this? Oh. Oh. What? Spoiler alert. This is breaking news. Didn't mean to spoil it for you. <laughs> I love it. I give up. I give up. Oh, it's okay. Oh, man. It's okay. It's, it, that's all we needed, Chad. We just needed whatever that animal was at the very end. Thank spoiler you. Spoiler alert thing. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, new Google Play. Uh, version of Google Play is getting updated, and I believe it's more kind of cosmetic stuff. This maybe well, is the biggest. Well, who knows? I, well, who knows? I mean, so the chat room pointed out uh, on Android headlines. They pointed out that just tonight, on the eve of Google I/O, uh, Google Play has updated to version one dot four dot one dot six, um, building off of the previous version four dot dot twenty seven. It doesn't have much of a change. Um, it says that some buttons on the home screen of the Play Store are now colored instead of white, and buttons on the app screens, open, install, uninstall, are now white. There's some minor visual tweaks, that sort of thing. But how do we know? Yes. Maybe there'll be something that, that is rolled out that this update was needed. So we'll see. Maybe a Game Center uh, button shows up. Maybe. Oh, yeah. yep. yes. Yep. So mm. keep I'm an in, eye. I'm intrigued. Well, if yes. that's the case... I imagine Android police are already breaking apart. Yeah, the oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah we'll see more of that. Yeah, right now, so. right now. Well, that, that was breaking news. So thank you, chat room, for being on top of that. And thank you, Chad, for being on top of the breaking news. I, 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 I didn't to want to spoil it for you. Or yes. le whatever that animal yeah. was. Yeah. Um, is it lemur or lemur? Or? Yeah. Lemur, lemur. Everyone lemur, saw me lemur. cut to it, and then it switched to spoiler alert, and then without me doing anything, it went to the lemur, right? <laughs> Everyone saw that, right? Okay, spoiler good. Spoiler lemur. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, Back on track. And then uh, last little bit of apps is uh, apps news in in the wasn't expecting this one. Uh, BlackBerry uh, finally goes cross platform with uh, bringing BBM to Android. If you're not familiar, BBM is the BlackBerry messaging service that's allowed group messaging across BlackBerry platform. Uh, and it's really curious to see Rim doing something outside of their own platform and doing it on Android. This is a good way to extend the use of their apps and allow people on Blackberries to talk with people on Android, but uh, didn't really see it coming. And so could iOS be far off? And 
Is this the death throes of BlackBerry? <laughs> I, part of me is like they need to rebrand it and come up with a different name, but that would be, and they're really kind of between a rock and a hard place. People who love BBM know it as BBM, right? So you don't want to change the name mm -hmm. at the same time. Just catch me on BBM on Android. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run BlackBerry Messenger on Android. Yeah, and I, mean, I believe they did, they did announce that it is for Android as well as iOS, so... Oh yeah, so so they're they're hitting both major fronts there. Yeah, it is, it's oh, and just kind of like a little. Yeah. They're just doing whatever they can to late. get users. Yeah, it's totally too little, too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This th man, this would have been this would have been so useful five years ago. You know, it, if and when. But I mean, five years ago there wasn't an Android necessarily, so right. I guess not. Uh, but when they were dominating, this would have been great on the other platforms. Now it's just like okay, yeah. So like there was there was a an app that I saw. I don't know, like a year, year and a half ago, that had the palm graffiti. And it was like, Aww, okay, yeah, that's yeah. So I guess that's kind of cool. And that was awesome back in the day. Yeah, remember? And then you go back to it now and you're like, why Why am I using this? Like, <laughs> kind of feels the same way. Uh, so we have a video mail, actually. Kyle Veach uh, sent us a video mail and basically has kind of a few ideas around glass and the stories that we've been hearing about different businesses banning glass. Let's see what we think about it. Hey, Triple A crew, just watched the episode, uh, Gina's glass is half empty. And I just had an interesting point about Google Glass. If everyone's paranoid about, you know, being filmed in public. I personally don't care if anyone films me in public. I, you know, while I'm walking around, they're not gonna catch me probably doing much. But, you know, as far as businesses like banning Google Glass and like the casino, you'd all ban Google Glass. Well, there's going to be more of this technology in the future anyways. You know, I'm sure Apple's going to come out with something and Microsoft and all the other devices. And soon we're going to, you know, five years from now, there's probably going to be a bunch of devices that can record as you're walking around. So instead of signaling Google out and banning, you know, specifically Google Glass, they should devise, like, you know, a symbol that they can put outside of business, like no, you know, that means no portable recording devices or places where people might not be comfortable with them recording inside. Um, you know, and over time, everyone's going to get used to this anyways, and I guarantee you, in a couple of years, no one's going to care if everyone's walking around with a device that can record or take pictures on their head. So just want to throw that idea out there to you guys. Love the show. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks. So a symbol, like a universal symbol, I saw this as an opportunity for the wise audience of All About Android to put together what they think a symbol, a symbol would be for, for this. And basically what he's saying is no... No glass. No glass or no recording device. I guess... That kind of gets like hard. More, I mean, the... it's it's similar because it's 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 like a, a whole bunch of my friends recently have sent me those articles about restaurants banning photos in the restaurants. I don't know why. If you follow me on Twitter, I like to take pictures of my food, and the, and what they're saying is that 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 is starting to eke into the ambiance of the restaurant. People leave their flash on. There's a couple people have taken to standing above the plate to get a good <laughs> shot. You know, and so like it's a similar thing. It's like how does how do we integrate this technology that allows you to capture video and audio into our everyday lives? Mm -hmm. um, you know, similar to and w which which I think find very funny because he says you know put up a sign that says no Google Glass or no recording in this establishment. At my gym, there are signs that say no cell phones. Does that stop the idiot on the phone at seven in the morning having a conference call on the on the treadmill? No, it doesn't. What are you no. supposed to do? Like lock them in your locker? I mean, whenever yeah. I see them, I'm just like, I'm not gonna. No, yeah. uh, my phone is just, you yeah. know, it's a thing. And with glasses, especially that you're wearing them, yeah. I feel like we just it should be the regular no video ca it's, you know, video camera or eyes or camera, just mm -hmm. the, yeah. you know, the regular sign, and yeah. you either decide to respect it or you, or you don't. Or apparently, oh. people don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's it's funny it's funny to see Google Glass specifically the the backlash that is going to come not from luddites but from not techie people like us like I I've, I've already had friends who I consider are technically savvy who have smartphones or smart whatever who have made things like you know the like I'm not going to take anybody seriously wearing that thing and like unless you have to wear it for work you're you know like it's ridiculous and so like I'll be curious to see what the how the adoption goes you know mm -hmm. um, whether or not it's whether or not it's something that can get adopted it's taken how many years to get phones to the point where they're they're acceptable no, and even then even then we're already getting reports of you know how many times you're in a conversation with somebody and I, I do it too I feel bad where you know you're talking to me and I'm going uh-huh hey uh -huh. hey uh, yeah, my yeah, eyes are yeah exactly yeah yeah no I mean you know <laughs> So it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. So yeah. Yeah. I had a friend say to me today, like if you, it, we're we're gonna get together, and he's like, if you wear glass, can I punch you in the face? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and well, you're like, just as is, long is as I'm recording, because that would look yeah. really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that video? Records, you get my fist right. coming right at you. Did you see that video that somebody shot with a GoPro? 
Did you see no. that? Oh, Chad, you probably saw that, right? Somebody somebody shot an action sequence, like very violent, very like Quentin Tarantino esque with the GoPro. Yes. Like, and so what it was is oh. that a dude was wearing the GoPro and he was like getting beat up and then it's he ran It's very out bloody, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was really cool. But imagine if that was shot with glass. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I don't oh, know how much I don't know how much video could be captured. Yeah, yeah. 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 How much how much time wait, well, you said it last week, but how much time do you get on the video with glass? We take video. Ten seconds by default, but you have so to So why isn't Twitter all over that with Vine? Yeah, well, you can't post Twitter right now. There is an official Twitter app. Right, but wow, wh wh ah, there's a crazy thing. I bet you they roll out Vine for Glass tomorrow. I know. <laughs> mm, Probably the thing that doing it's the editing perfect. on Glass would be would be hard though. No, but it's just seven seconds. Oh, just video. the like tap yeah, and yeah. release and then and publish tap, the Vine. Release. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah I, w I will say hmm. since we're talking about uh, recording time on Glass, two times today I've on fully charged. I've tried to make it through an entire episode of both Tech News Today and the Gizwiz recording as, you know, me just doing my, my job, life. technical directing. And it only makes it about 44 minutes or so before the battery dies completely. The battery so. dies, That's yeah. just useless. Depends useless. on what you're using it for, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, 44 minutes. I mean, how often are you shooting 44? Like, that's... Yeah. Well, right. you were shooting 44 minutes of video? Or? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where's so, it recording to? It's recording, recording to the to, internal to glass, and then it and then it oh, it instant yeah. uploads to Google right. Plus. Okay, all right. Oh, I thought you were just you were just wearing it, not using it, just like oh, no, it, no, it no, was no, on. No. I was right. like, I don't know how long it yeah. lasts. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, with video. And when you're not using it, it's off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when you're not yeah. using yeah. it, most people don't realize that the I glass screen yeah. isn't always on. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, it probably lasts a decent amount of time when it's off, other than I guess the Bluetooth communication. I feel the need to put mine back on. <laughs> the ten second, the ten second default is actually nice. It uh, was a good choice, yeah. like with yeah. a baby and stuff, or just kind of slice of life. It's yeah, totally. really nice to just be like, yeah. yeah, I did this today. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's very vine esque. Kyle, thank you for sending in the boy uh, the video mail. Uh, anyone could do that. You just send an, us an email, aaa at twit.tv. Attach a link to a video, uh, upload it to YouTube or something like that, and we'll be happy to play it on the show. Love getting the video mail and the voicemails as well. Uh, without further ado, let's dive into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. <laughs> Android Arena. What the Spanish flair at the end of that. Arena. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Last week, we had Ninja SMS, DigiCal Plus, and Schemes. The results are in. And Ninja SMS brings Gina back, back to, to the, the winner's circle, back, front of the pack. Back. I, I have to be honest. I did not think schemes would be would go as long as it did. At one point, we were neck and neck. Yeah, we this were, morning, we were it was like yeah, it was we like within neck. a yeah. And so. you know, drawn passed on Ninja SMS. I did like pass two on Ninja SMS. Ago, yeah, yeah. So you know, your, I don't yeah, know. Your loss, Ron. I should have. I well, <laughs> no, I won. Really, I won. Lost. I lost. So. But I, the, I went with sliding <laughs> message, messaging pro, and I won that week. Yeah, that's right. That was a good choice. That was a good choice. Um, yay! Finally Excellent broke the job, stream. you guys did a great job. I unfortunately did not. So that means that I get to go first here. Let me uh, pull up what I need to pull up here. I went with something that okay. I'm not. A, I'm not necessarily a professional photographer. I don't consider myself like. I'm I'm total amateur photographer with my phone, but still Trey Ratcliffe, who uh, is a very well known photographer, he put out an app a while ago on iOS called Stuck on Earth, and it's basically designed to uh, help photographers or people that just want to kind of explore the world, uh, kind of geolocate and, and pin all of those different pictures that they take around the world. Well, he just rolled out a version on Android, actually, just yesterday. And uh, so I got it on my tablet here. I'll go ahead and pull it up and show it off a little bit. Again, I'm more of a... Uh, more of just kind of a, a a watcher of this app. I'm not necessarily probably going to use it a whole lot for, you know, uploading all of my photos to it. But it's really cool to kind of get a get a sense of, oh, do you want the audio? Hold on, I do, I do because yeah. they have a professional voiceover artist for this. Here, let me put this in, and uh, she kind of cracks me up because it kind of sounds a little, I don't know. You tell you tell me what you think. If you really want to explore places that are truly exotic, visit deep in the Orient. Dozens of tiny uh, countries hold what? all sorts of secrets. I, I, like, I kind of feel uncomfortable listening to her. Um, I agree. Just a little too sultry. Um, anyways, let's go into Explore Your World. So basically, it'll pull up a map. And give you, you know, you can you can maneuver through the map and everything. And what it's doing is right now it's on this featured photos mode. And you can actually, you know, dive into anywhere around here. And once it kind of 
gets its bearings, it'll load on this geographical location. It says loading image locations. And it'll start to drop pins all around here of different pictures that people have taken that are geolocated to those particular points on the map. So you can take a look here. Where are we looking at right now? This is, uh, let's see here, Jatai. And you can kind of scan through here and see just all of these awesome pictures that were taken in different places. They're all, you know, you, you get all of the information around kind of how the, you know, how the picture was taken, kind of the exposure, aperture, all that, and how it lines up on a map. It's just kind of a cool way to explore the world based on really interesting photos, right? Can you, you, go, to, can you go to India? <laughs> well, you can go anywhere, Ron. Is that what that lady tells you? There we go. There we go. Ron, awesome. if you would like oh, yes. to go into go. India. Would you like to go to There's India? Um, I'm noticing on the Wi-Fi here it takes a little bit of time to load, so I don't know if it's if it's slow to load everywhere, but um, here it seems to be a little bit. could just be our Wi-Fi. Down here is a little pins drag that right now is set kind of low. If I was to bring that up, I'd get way more kind of results. It kind of Interesting. ends up hitting a lot more results over time. But it's just kind of a cool way to, to explore around. There's a few different modes. Right now, I think I'm in the photographer mode. If I go back to actually... I'm so see happy here. you keep coming back. <laughs> I know. Okay, by the way, when I first like launched this That's app, creepy. it was during a show that was happening in the studio, and I didn't have my... Uh, my audio turned down, so it was like, hello, Jason, what would you like to do? I'm like, oh, my God, you don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm breathing heavily. I know. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Uh, but there, there are just different ways that you can do this. You can, uh, you can set up a trip. So if you think you're going to go on a trip to San Francisco, let's say, or let's just take one that's in here, Adventure in France, you could set it up in advance and then kind of take pictures while you're there, or you can go back after the fact and take a, take a look at all the pictures you took at that particular location. Uh, but overall, it's just kind of a neat way to kind of scan through. Um, what am I missing here? They have curated top 50 lists, lists, lists for places to visit and photograph. So if you aren't you know, sure of what you want to do when you're in San Francisco, we'll just dive right in here real quick. We can go to San Francisco. I could have just searched to get there, but I'm going the long way, apparently. So we'll go down to Chrissy Field. We'll wait for it to load up a little bit. It's loading the image locations. We'll start to see all the little pins. And Tony Wang, uh, who, you know, one of the employees here at Twit, was basically uh, saying that he would use this to get ideas of places to go to actually take pictures. Um, so he was like, oh, I really like that picture. I want to recreate it myself and, and get my own version of that photo. So you just see all of these different pins and kind of from that perspective, it's been geolocated and gives you kind of the photo that came from that point in time. Uh, just kind of a, a neat neat thing, I think. It, you can connect it to your Flickr and then your geolocated photos can be added to the app and seen in the community photos section, which I can show you real quick and then I'll pass the mic. but. There's a community photos tab here. And, uh, you know, so then I'm basically loading in a different layer of photos that come in, not just from kind of curated contributors, but also from the community. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's uh, called Stuck on Earth. It's free. It's designed really well. Uh, I really like it, and it's uh, pretty snappy. Um, and if you want to just kind of explore the world, check it out. I mean, it's free, so you have no reason not to. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I have nothing more to say. Cool. Nice. You get you get a sultry voice. Make Thank your, you. Make your wife jealous. I know. It made me uncomfortable. I'm really happy I didn't open that at home. She'd be wondering what's going on. Would not be cool. Who are you talking to? Yes. Who was that? Well, then. No, it was an app. Oh, I'm sure it was an app. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on to my arena pick. Uh, this is another case of where I had a uh, app lined up, and then this morning I came across this. I'm like, oh, I'm totally going to change this. So I apologize in my demo. I don't have enough data, but we can use the screenshots from the Google Play Store to kind of illustrate it. Um, a lot of people, uh, we all dream. We all go to sleep. Hopefully we have some restful sleep. And when you get in that nice REM mode, you get some pretty active dreams. Um, I happen to have some often uh, I'll wake up and fall back to sleep and have super realistic dreams that are really wacky and crazy. And they're fun, some, you know, they're fun to remember. Um, it's a common practice, both, uh, both from a creative standpoint as well as from a therapeutic standpoint, to sometimes keep a pad and pen by your nightstand and, and write down your dreams. Well, this app lets you helps you do that and does it in a really interesting way and also plays into the fact that we love our data visualization. 
So uh, Dream Board Mobile is the name of the app. It's a really pretty, well-designed app, not using Hollow, but um, using its own kind of, you know, own kind of design. Although it's, it's actually very flipboardy when you when it comes down to oh, it. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah. But so, um, actually, Chad, hold on. I'll show you the demo first, then we can go to this, the screenshots. Um, but so this is designed for phones, but it scales up to tablet really well. And it's actually a good good example of an app that uh, it works on both platforms without a unique tablet version versus a phone version. So here, if we load it up, um, and again, I'm going to apologize. I don't have a ton of data in this one. But... Um, it loads up initially with your dream board, which kind of gives you stats, but I'm going to skip ahead of that. And I'm going to add a dream. So let's say I just woke up and I want to capture what my dream was about. The top area here uh, tells you what was your mood, and it gives you kind of a range. as an unpleasant dream, a neutral dream, or a pleasant dream. So I'm going to have a pleasant dream. And then you could expand emotions. And there are little icons to tell you what the emotions were. Was it angry? Was it, were you surprised? Was there joy, sadness, disgust, fear? And you can add other emotions and you can type them in. You know, I can say love, you know, and ooh, ooh and that will add it. It doesn't give a little icon for love, but yeah. But so in this one, I'll just say surprise. And then what I think is really interesting is that the next section is colors. And I don't know about you and your dreams and stuff like that, but I often do have colorful dreams. Sometimes there are dominant colors involved. So you could say, you know, it was very filled with blues and reds. And that sort of thing, and it, it includes the colors that uh, were present in your dream. So you can add kind of a, a visual spectrum of what you dreamt about um, from a color standpoint. Then in role, this is really interesting, a little switch here. I was the main character in the dream, yes or no? <laughs> Which, I mean, I'm usually the main character in my dreams, but maybe some people dream about being a secondary character. That's fine. Um, then there's things, places, and people. And so you can add locations and people to your dream. Um, and then you can add a little bit of narration. You can give the, t the title a dream and then write down what happened. Um, so once you do that, it takes that information and then uploads it up to their service, and it keeps track of your dreams. Um, and then you can go back and you can look through your journal and you look at your various dreams. So here, earlier today, I loaded that I had a neutral dream about Google I.O., and the emotion was I was surprised and the color was green. And Jason, you were there, and Gina, you were there, and we were at Google I.O., and, um, and the dream was, I was the main character, because the dream was, I got invited. So, oh, what um, a great dream. Yeah, Aww. isn't that? Yeah, Dreaming yeah. about Google I.O. Yeah, I know. Um, but what's really <laughs> interesting is that based off of the colors and based off of the uh, emotions and, and, and things like that that you enter in, you could tap similar dreams, and it will go to the dream board community and give you, hypothetically, if I touch that, I guess there are no similar dreams because I haven't given enough information, but you can get similar dreams to that from both the community as well as from your, your own personal dreams. Um, there's a bunch of settings in here, so you can, um, you can set a reminder to remind you to document your dream in case you need that. Um, you can have like a little alarm clock to go off to say, hey, write down your dream. You can also connect Facebook and Twitter if you want to post your stuff. You can also password protect it, because, which I think is important because some people might want to protect what they're dreaming about. Um, but then, once you get a bunch of dreams built up in your journal, and Chad, if we can go back to the uh, screenshot, um, then what you get is you get this great data visualization of your life in dreams. And you can see that, you know, that for 62% of your dreams, you know, I'm, I'm present or I'm not present or I'm you know, somebody else. You could say what colors are there. You can um, identify generally um, you often dream about being scared or you dream about being sad or that sort of thing. And it gives you a great um, a great kind of way to, and on this screen here, I want to keep it, you know, in general, your mood is, you know, 28% of the time you're agreeable, even though they spelled agreeable wrong, which is interesting. I just noticed that. Um, maybe they're foreign. Uh, <laughs> agreeable. Um, yeah. It's, it's spelled wrong in my app, too. Here, look. Agreeable. <laughs> um, Agreeable. Agreeable. So, anyway, Dreamboard Mobile. It's a fun, fun well-designed app that works great on phones and tablets for keeping track of your dream journals. Um, it's totally free. If you're into that, go for it. If you're agreeable, give it a download. See if you like it. So, there you go. Or agreeable. Dreamboard Mobile. Agreeable. Log your dreams. Yep. And do it quick before, you know, you're, you're awake too long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's the key. It fades away. Um, cool. So Stuck on Earth, Dreamboard Mobile. Michael, you've got a pretty awesome app. Okay, I and we better go quick. Come yeah, on, my yeah, demo's working. I've been uh, feverishly working over here trying to get my demo working. <laughs> so um, 
And it's a complicated app, so it's uh, understandable sense, if the yeah. demo does not work all the time. Anyway, um, my app is called uh, Barbecue Screen. Um, what was the full root, name of it? Barbecue Screen Root. So this is an app. You have to have root permissions for it, and it's a two ninety nine in the market. Um, so I'm a developer, and I frequently have to show my apps to uh, business people or the UI team, whatever. Uh, the emulator is not always a great option for that. Um, so there's really, it's really difficult to get a, um, to present your app on a computer. So I tried a slim port adapter, I tried all sorts of different things, but uh, anyway, there's a real challenge in, uh, presenting, in uh, presenting an app on a computer. Uh, and so that's what Barbecue Screen Root does. Basically, it is a mirror app for your phone to mirror your uh, screen onto a computer. So um, you can chat if you want to show my um, screen. So basically, uh, all you do is you set it up to, um, you know, there's just a really simple UI that says, um, you know, share my screen. Sorry, let me get this into the screen. I'll stop moving now. <laughs> um, it's moved I, the phone around a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, re it's a really simple app. Basically, you just, um, you know, set up the screen. You can set different frame rates and things. I have it turned very far down uh, now because I think I was having Wi-Fi issues. Um, so it doesn't look great. Um, I, I've used this quite a bit. Um, the response is almost real time. When you press something on your phone, it almost shows up cool. instantly. So um, I don't know how you want... Oh, oh, great. This is good. So uh, you'll nice. see. Oh, wow. Look at uh, that. You know, when I um, do Whoa. stuff on the phone, it just shows up right on the screen. Whoa. Oh, and it's pretty snappy. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's a little bit of a delay, but it's pretty snappy. It's really snappy. I mean, you you can see that it's, um, you know, pretty uh, pretty fast. So this solves a really big problem for me. Uh, and that's, over both, that's just over Wi-Fi. Uh, this is over Wi-Fi. And truthfully, it's it's better. I think the Wi-Fi here is um, a little yeah. bit challenging. But, it is. Yeah. Um, for two ninety nine, this solved a huge problem for me. I That's bought, awesome. I paid thirty dollars for a slim port adapter, which I can't even use to, to yeah. put on here. You know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, we f have to try to solve problems however we can. Yeah. Um, and this is just new. They released it um, maybe two months ago, and it had a lot of problems. It didn't. Uh, you couldn't connect to your phone and stuff. Uh, the developer uh, contacted me via comments in the app. Oh, nice. And said, "Hey, we fixed it. Fancy. Uh, check it out again." Um, and it works great now. Yeah, you can so. see that there were some. So there was some one-star reviews, and then it just got better. And yeah. Got uh, the, so the ratings are really pretty bad on this app, only because um, it didn't really it didn't work, work when first. they first released it. And you know, I gave it a one-star review, said it didn't work. Of course, I've changed it now to five stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, it it really works great, and it really solved a huge problem for me. And for uh, two dollars and ninety-nine cents, it's like. Uh, well, what's no what's great about it is that I mean, you as a, doing a demo, but you could also, from a developer, uh, not from a, a non-developer standpoint, from a consumer standpoint, show photos. Like it's uh, you know, it's play, really uh, play videos. Play vi I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you had some sort of thing that you wanted to share, so everyone can see our rundown. Um, if you wanted to, you know, have photos or photo galleries or videos or anything like that, presentations, you know, like so. <laughs> Demoing an app is a great way, but it looks like it's got other applications. That's yeah, really cool. I, right. Anything yeah. that you have on your phone, you can show on the screen, which, yeah. uh, I mean, you can play games. I mean, quite a, quite a few different things. And we get that question actually pretty regularly in the email, which is, you know, I want to be able to, you know, get get my phone showing up on my screen or I want to be able to, how do I record it? How do I record what I see on my phone in some way? This is mm -hmm. this would be a great way to do it if you had that and like a screen capture utility, that would be one way to go. My one wish list item is the ability to see where your uh, finger is touching on the screen. So, it's like a hotspot. So you can always do that through the uh, developer options in the phone oh, itself. Oh, right. So right? you can just turn that on. and Yeah, very no. nice. Yeah. So they should put see. a shortcut to that in the app. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, that, which you yeah, can do actually. Yeah, you can that, totally do that's that, a really yeah. good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's yeah. nice. I, there's an intent to do that. You, yeah. <laughs> you can make that call. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Very right nice. On. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, I, you know, this was a great app. I almost picked it a couple of weeks ago, but, you know, you can have it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to I'm the on. guest here, right? <laughs> on, I didn't mean that to sound as bad as it did. I'm just saying. I was agreeing. It was a good app. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, I'm not a mean. jerk. Yeah, I found that app, but then I found something better. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just messing with you wrong. And I was mad that because I, I wanted to use it. <laughs> That's, not actually going I feel. That's actually how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have this on my list. Yeah. And and I know I was going to get to it eventually. And when you brought it up, I was like, yes, that is going to be a great app. You're going to do well with that. Uh, awesome. BBQ screen root for all you root users out there. All right, Gina.
You're rounding it out. What you got to follow up last week's win? All right. My pick this week is a relatively pricey app. It's called Pushover. If you go to pushover.net or you can find it in the Play Store, it's $4.99, which is relatively ex expensive for an app. But what I really like about Pushover, it's it's kind of a developer-centric power user, I would say, app. It's a simple notifi push notification service for your phone. It's a push notification client for your phone. So you install Pushover on your phone, and then you can hook it up to any kind of any number of services or apps that that integrate with Pushover, and any app can integrate with Pushover. Uh, so if you're a geek, network monitoring systems like Nagios can send you push notifications, uh, shell, shell scripts, uh, anything that needs to send you alerts. And there are a few different apps that are pretty popular that work with Pushover already. Uh, for example, there's an eBay price watcher. So you can say, watch my eBay items and send me a, a push notification when the, the price changes or whenever they've, they've, they've been bid on. Uh, there's a Fitbit notifier. So when your Fitbit is running out of battery or it hasn't synced in a long time, it'll it'll send a push notification. ADM, which is my, or ADM, I, don't, I think ADM. it's a ADM, yeah, which is my uh, I, am, I am client of choice. If you're away, you can send a push notification if someone sent you an instant message. Uh, Sickbeard plugin, a WordPress a plugin. plugin. There's a Sickbeard plugin, Whoa. yeah, that lets you know if, if downloads uh, uh, have, downloads? Yeah, this sure. it's, yeah, uh, manages your TV shows. Uh, you can add pushover notifications to your WordPress blog. One of the best integrations with pushover is IFTTT. That's if this, then that. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah, so pushover is actually a trigger in IFTTT. So any <laughs> recipe you set up in IFTTT, you can send a pushover uh, mobile alert. So, for example, a couple of really good recipes. You can say, send me a pushover when my package changes status. So enter your tracking number. If my package is shipped or it's changed status, send me a pushover notification. Uh, send me a severe weather alert. Uh, if an RSS feed changes, send me send me a pushover alert. So all all pushover is is push notifications, uh, but it's really handy because anything you want to get push notifications for, you can see. So um, I, I, Chad, you can switch to my device. I apologize. I didn't know that I was actually going to be here until like a few hours ago. So my phone <laughs> my phone may die in the middle of this. Uh, but as you can see, pushover has a a widget, and I've actually been integrating ThinkUp, my app, into Pushover. It's really easy as a developer to say if I want push notifications for my app, I can do so. Here's a widget of some of the notifications my app have been has been sending. Uh, there's also a lock screen widget. There is a a dash clock widget as well, a dash clock extension, and Pushover can also send alerts to Pebble watches. So it's really kind of positioning itself to be kind of the smart push notification service. I really like it a lot. And um, if you, you know, if you, if you like to get alerted for things that, you know, it, not using SMS or not using IM, not using email, just getting it straight, straight in your notification shade. And I apologize, I don't have any pushover uh, notifications in my shade at the moment. But you can see a bunch of examples uh, in the Play Store. This is a really, really great app and uh, worth the price because it plugs into so many different services already. And it's available for iOS too if you, uh, if you switch. Switch operating systems. That's that's pushover four ninety nine, and uh, go to push pushover .net as well to get more information about it. Oh yeah, Chad showing some of the screenshots there from the Play Store. Thanks, Chad. Awesome. That looks great. I hadn't heard of pushover actually. That's really cool. Yeah. That's a really. I mean, yeah, that's that that that's gonna win. I don't and know. Here's gonna come a second. I'm gonna come in last. I like, I'm, I, I'm I like the, the hippie who brought the dream journal. <laughs> I like the fact that on the Pushover's main website, it was just like, hey, by the way, here's the code just to integrate it into yeah, any no, of your I, products that's if you really want. Cool. And like, I literally copied and pasted that code into like, my app and, and had, had it working in an hour. It was very simple to I get push notifications. I do have that's to great. admit, having Gina here in the studio allows me to be very impressed that she has notes about her app. Yeah. Like, I am... By the like, way, did we ever mention that Gina was... Like, at the top of the show, did we just go straight oh, to glass? Studio, everybody. Uh, yeah, Gina's I'm here. here. I'm here. I didn't yeah. know I was going to be here. Did we just bury the lead? <laughs> These guys were like, oh, you'll be at the airport? Like, yeah. Can you meet Ron? And I was like, okay. Yeah. So we made that happen. call that out at the top we of did. the show. We did. Yeah. Well, because we, we had the glass bit. We had Michael here. We had just, like, everything So, by the out. way, surprise, <laughs> Gina's in studio. Wow. The reason, yeah. the reason why I have notes is because I panicked. I never do the demo myself, right? Jason always does it. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I was panicking because you guys were presenting. And I was like, oh, my God. She's my up in her game. Bad. She's up and in her I, game. I had glass connected to my phone. So, of course, instantly my phone died because, yeah. you know, that's what that's what glass does. As a, as a uh, so I was like, Ron, is there a, is there a plug over here? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, mo, the Mo 85 goes.
goes, I didn't Sorry. even notice. <laughs> anyway, All so right, good job. So the well done. Whole URL. That was that was great. This is this is gonna be another good uh, good week of apps. I think this is gonna be a <laughs> this close one race. for the ages. AAApoll.com slash one zero nine. Triple Apoll.com slash one zero nine. Let us know what you think is your favorite app of the week. Is it stuck on Earth? Dreamboard Mobile, BBQ Screen, or Pushover. And so far, Pushover came out to a very nice lead in the early stages. Yeah, see, we'll got, see how this pans out. I got price time. working against me. But, uh, yeah, this is looking Stuck good. on Earth, ringing it in with zero votes there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, really, it's better than... Okay, thank you. I got that one vote. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the board now. Three yeah, percent. You know. 3% of the vote, you know. 3% is better than 1%. So, yeah. you know, there's that. Um Excellent. Well, this was a, a fantastic show. It was and a great episode. I'm looking episodes. forward to really uh, the next couple of days to see what's in store. Chef I'm looking forward to that very last minute invite that Ron's sure to get tonight. I already, I can. I have a meeting in the morning. So. <laughs> no, Ron's like, That's no. That's why you don't yeah. even want to go, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, screw it. I'm not even going to watch. I'm just going to read, I'm just gonna read the recap later. I mean, I got I got glass now. What do I need I.O. for? <laughs> don't poke your head in the eye that There you go. Don't pierce your skull with that, okay? This part. It's, I should have put some teeth ow, on ow, the ow. end. This part, the sharp metal bit here. I don't know if you see that. Yeah. When Digging you put it on, it just ow, <laughs> scrapes. There you go. It just needs to be fit to your head. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't go through the fitting. Yeah, yeah, fitting. yeah you didn't go through yeah, the fitting. That's yeah, a work of art. It That's really looks happened. good. I'm really impressed. I'm going to start wearing this so around. Was. Yeah. That was that was sight unseen in, re, in like real world. You know yeah. what I mean? He did that based on what... What he saw like oh, yeah. did a, a fantastic really job. Wow, yeah, <laughs> uh, even down to the the, the yeah. monstrous oh, thing. Oh, 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 let us know kind of what you're up to and, and what you got okay. going. Um, well, I'm just in the final throes of finishing a book um, from O'Reilly titled um, Android Developer Tools Essentials. So um, it's all about uh, using the tools to make your Android development easier. I'm in the final throes uh, nice. just maybe a couple more weeks. Uh, so it's available now in pre-order if you're interested and you want to get it. Um, AUTHD is a discount code that'll give you 50% off the hardcover, 40% off um, wow. the digital. So uh, that's on O'Reilly. But of course, uh, if you'd like to go pre order it on Amazon, I wouldn't mind that either. So uh, anyway, it's called Android Developer Tools and uh, it should be out in the next uh, month or two. Congratulations. Right on. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. got to be, got to feel good to kind of get to the. It the will end feel of the good. Yeah. It's not over yet. So right, now, right. now it doesn't feel so good. A lot yeah. of work still to do, but. Well, the light at the end of the yes. tunnel. That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Congratulations on that. Uh, A U T H. Or A U T H. Uh, uh, I don't remember now. Uh, <laughs> think about it. Think about we'll it. go over to G. Uh, I think it's A U T H D. A U T H D has the authorization right. code. Awesome. Thanks again, man. Uh, right what's on. up, Gina? Uh, I co host this week in Google as well as this show. And we will be back here in studio tomorrow directly after the Google I.O. keynote. I'll be here with Jeff Jarvis and Leo talking over everything I.O. So you should come and watch live. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. We'll probably be my actually start a little bit late on p.m. Pacific time. And otherwise, you can see everything I'm up to at ginatrapani.org. I also build an open source web app called thinkup, thinkup.com. And you can check out my Android app to do text, to do txt.com. Excellent. Awesome having you in the studio. It's great to be here. I hope I hope we can get it get it happening again. I gotta fly in soon. every week. Forget yeah, it. Every I can't. Week. Yeah. It's a floating sky pad. Just they're not gonna well, cut we, it. From we pa we passed that land that, that airport, that mini landing strip up in, in I Sonoma. Can fly in. Yeah. I flown. I yeah, can just, just do that. In. Yeah, yeah, that'd be yeah. fine. Yeah. Right. Bring your helicopter yeah, just, or the yeah. jet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the helipad. I need is there a helipad up on the roof? There should be. There should be. The twin helicopter should go pick her up, right? Exactly. Now you're talking. <laughs> so how do I pair this to my phone? It's not working. I'll have to show you. It takes, right. it's it a, takes few a few steps. It takes a little bit. All right. Yeah. Right. Ow. I'll have to show you. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you got, Rob? About.me slash RonXO. All the links to my stuff. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, all that fun stuff. And uh, go to imagecomics.com where you check out all the wonderful comic books that I work every day very hard on with the rest of the team over at Image, like The Walking Dead and Saga and fun stuff. And uh, a little teaser, we'll have a little exciting stuff in the digital world coming up soon. So uh, if you're Ooh. into comic books, stay tuned this summer. 
So. Excellent. Stay yep. tuned for that. You can find, uh, actually, no, Chad. Oh, uh, I do a show on this network uh, all about Minecraft. You can check that out at omgcraft. Uh, dot com and I just uploaded a YouTube video where I drew my life so you can go to youtube.com slash omg chad and check that out if you want to you drew your life I drew I drew my life in I drew it in with markers in oh. in in on a whiteboard on a whiteboard yeah how'd that work out for you it was great I, I had to watch to find out it was great yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's something new that I did so I wanted to pimp it other than just omg craft because cool. it was like something new Okay. Sounds neat. Cool. I haven't heard of drawing your life on a yeah, whiteboard. Yeah, it's like a new thing. All the kids are doing it. Really? All of them. God, you're so no. hip. <laughs> I just, no. Stop being so hip. So hip. Uh, <laughs> if I drew my life on the whiteboard, that'd be like, how do you draw a debt? Of, a what? Debt? How do you draw a debt? <laughs> debt? Uh, like an ocean? Debt. An debt. ocean? Debt. Yeah, Not something debt. like that. Debt. <laughs> we're anyway, where can they find your stuff? Right. Yes. Music so not me slash Jason Howell or yellowgoldmusic.com. Find some stuff there uh, as well. That's it for this week. Voicemails can be left at 347-SHOW-AAA. You can always leave us an email or a video mail. Attach a link to your email. Send that to AAA at twit.tv. Love getting those. Uh, find the show on Twitter. We're at Android Show. We're on G+. We also have an awesome hopping community on G+, so look for that. Uh, show notes can always be found at twit.tv slash AAA, as well as past episodes there, YouTube, iTunes, all over the internet. And finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Here, I'll make sure that you don't look so, so weird. Glassware. <laughs>